<laughs> that was the best introduction. So please, before anything else, you know, Howard, one, one more time, please. <laughs> 94 WBLK coming to you live from downtown Bucharest. Flurries and sunshine, but I haven't seen any sunshine today yet. Cloudy skies are higher on 20 degrees, clear tonight, partly clear. A low near 15, 24 Metro Midtown. And right now at WBLK, it's Howard Dell with Your Loving is a Real Thing. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ladies and gents, I have the pure pleasure to talk to Howard Dell this evening. <laughs> I mean, Howard, thank yeah. you very much for, for accepting the invitation hey. on such a short notice. Uh, and uh, my man, I don't know what to start with because uh, you've got a long list of achievements in your life. And uh, I, I, sometimes I even have to read them not to forget <laughs> parts of them. I mean, for me, at least, uh, right. I'm, I'm really proud to, to be sitting here talking to one Olympian. So, yeah, I'm really proud. So, Howard, Olympian, uh, professional football player, professional basketball player, uh, movies. I mean, everybody knows if, if, if I'm telling him, just showing you a picture, no, I know that guy. I know, you know. He looks yeah. familiar. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oscar, I mean, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. That's, that's the, the goal. goal. Yeah, that's the list. Yeah. Uh, and uh, above all, uh, something for the guys uh, looking at us uh, now. I mean, you've won the greatest match of all, let's say. The, the, the match of, yeah, with the, death, let's say, or uh, with yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I don't know what to start with because you've got so many things in your life and uh, yeah, a, a pure piano player. You oh. have to see his. Nah, nah, nah. I love the piano. Yeah, <laughs> if we had a piano in here. We'd be like, there'd be a show. Be like, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, where to start? Um, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. I just, you know, farm boy. You know, just a country boy. A um, lot of goals, um, and um, you know, looked up to a lot of people and like. In basketball, this guy named Dr. J, he was the Michael Jordan of my time. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson, you know, we, he's like only a year older than I am. You know, we both had the big fro. Um, and then, you know, I'm looking at TV. My dad has his sports stars and I have my sport. You know, you just sort of like as a kid, you sort of like, I want to do that, you know. And uh, I always wanted to do that. I was sort of like, why can't I, you know. And then, of course, you know, you, you, people want to slap you down with a little reality. Like, come on. You know, you'll never do that. You'll never do this. You'll never do that. I'm like, yeah, it just went in one ear out the other. I was just like, absolutely, eh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But uh, but I think because you already mentioned because uh, uh, you you've shown me some picture and uh, you coming from a, is it okay to say mixed couple? Cause yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, that, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, talking about the let's say the barriers that we have in society Ooh. and so on. Yeah, what have you faced with during your? Well, that was uh, that was tough. Like um, you know my. Father Jamaican, I said, Jamaican man, you know, Lord have mercy, I can't believe. And mother's <laughs> Irish, top of the morning, I tell you, she's a good Irish lass, you know. I'm Balting Glass County Wicklow. Um, yeah, that was tough for them. They got married in 1958, keeping in mind that in the U.S. it wasn't even legal to be married. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They came to Canada where it was legal to be married. And um, yeah, I mean, at that point in time, you're talking 1958, civil rights movement hadn't started. Um, you know, blacks couldn't vote. The Civil Rights Amendment wasn't passed until 1964. Um, you had to go, you had segregation. You go in this side of the street, uh, you, you can't go in the front door of the restaurant, you got to go in the back door. Um, you know, and not that it's, you know, anyway, so that's what my parents are growing up with. So I'm, I'm seeing the adversity and the challenges that they have to grow up with, um, even in terms of being disowned by their, their family and friends. So they just basically had each other. That's it, you know. And um, so, you, you, you know, and that was a struggle and it was difficult and, uh, you know, it had its problems, but you get to grow up seeing, you know, how they worked through that adversity it wasn't perfect, but they they got it done. So I don't know if that was the inspiration to like, hey, if they can do it. Mom and dad can do things. They can maybe I, I guess I can do them too. You know, um, absolutely. So, and, and my dad was always um, he was. I think he's worried about us. You know, he grew up he grew up with that racism, and he was worried about his kids. And I think he's like he always used to say, "Listen, you need to be twice as good just to be considered equal." Unbelievable, right? So. Okay, you can bring home. It's okay if you have a C or a B in your report card, but you, you got to do more, man. Right? They're gonna they're gonna tease you, and they're gonna say this yeah. and that. And I said, what happens if you what happens if you bring home an A in your report card? What, what are people gonna say then? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, okay. So if you're gonna be on an athletic team, a football team, a tennis team, whatever you're gonna do, so what are they gonna say if uh, you know you're the best one? Well, 
So maybe this is the actual, let's say, source uh, of all your achievements because you just wanted all the time to just, you know, high achiever as you are, right. yeah? And you just wanted to overcome all the situations that you had in your life. Because yeah. I know you for a while now and yeah. uh, I've seen, uh, for example, um, how did you manage to, to work in such uh, different, let's say, activities? Like, for example, uh, football, basketball, and then... Uh, you go to Olympics, and then that the bobsledge it's completely different. It's uh, yeah, yeah. The for me with the um, you know, and I guess in any sport, let's take let's take four or five sports. The common denominator. What are yeah. the, what are the common denominators? What's the yeah. base of the pyramid? And I always thought the base the base of the pyramid was strength and speed. Okay, strength and speed, and and to be an athlete, you know, we always wanted to have the uh, the agility of a footballer mm -hmm. and uh, the strength of a gymnast. Nice. And the uh, grace of a basketball player, like those, were, those were the three. You, if you were, if you had that, if you could do those three sports, no one could touch you. You were God. And um, the underlying base of the pyramid was always strength and speed. So you showed up, and what do you do when you show up to a sport and you have strength and speed, and you're the fastest and the strongest? I mean, people will look at that and sort of go, "We'll teach you how to play for the game." Yeah, they will, right? I mean, uh, they will. I mean, that was that was my bet, I and mean, it worked. You know, and I, and I see that now. I mean, that's why they talk about, you know, you talk about different athletes in different sports as great athletes. You know, not just a great footballer, mm -hmm. not just a great tennis player, a great, a great you know, look, look at tennis players, you know. Yeah. Djokovic, Federer, yeah. they're great athletes. It's an athlete. They're yeah. an athlete. That's a great yeah. athlete. Serena Williams, yeah. a great athlete. And, uh, you know, um, everybody from, uh, I bet you Hanji could have played different sports. And even Mr. Tidiak, you know, mm -hmm. he, play, he was an Olympic hockey player. You know, hockey and tennis at the highest level. Great athlete. And how is that possible? Yeah. Right. Because you have the foundation. Yeah. yeah. Strength and speed. So yeah. Were you lifting, uh, were you lifting uh, weights? Yeah, I started in the uh, ninth grade because I was the skinniest kid in school. And I just started with push-ups and pull-ups. Okay. And, um, you know, we couldn't, I unfortunately couldn't afford, you know, weights. Um, I would, I remember I had to tie a rope around a brick with a stick and do curls. And, <laughs> and uh, you know. Um, old school, baby. Old, old school, school, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I remember uh, this, uh, we had weights at the school. And since my father was a teacher there, I talked to the phys ed teacher, and he let me bring them home in the summertime. So I was just like, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start lifting some weights now. You know, <laughs> ooh, this 20 kilos is heavy. Uh. You know, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I was just always like, okay, well, I want to work out. Um, eh, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know exactly what the driving force was. I just knew I had to be bigger and stronger. Uh, I was not going to get pushed around. Um, I wasn't going to have you know. I wasn't. I did. Who wants to be made fun of? Um, and if you do make fun of me, that's like okay, make fun of me. But I have an A. What do you have in the course? Or, you know, you, you, you want to make fun of me? Yeah, but I won the race. So, bye-bye, you know. <laughs> so, at least you have, you have a defense, right? Um, you know, if you're last and they're making fun of you, you're sort of like, mm, I'm nobody. I was, I was terrible. I was last. <laughs> I wasn't going to be last. But, but all these things were never, let's say, was it motivating for you or you got discouraged? Because it, what, what, why am I asking this? Because, you see, in Romania, and we'll get to this subject, Maybe we do not have the same um, amount of athletes that uh, are, you can find in the US, for example. So when you have such um, amount of uh, competitors and the competition is so high, like in the US, how do you handle the emotional aspect, right? Because as you said, it could make you, you know, like I want more or let's say, okay, I'm going to eat enough with this. Yeah, it's um, hmm. a good question. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, so, you know, growing up and looking at Canada, for example, I mean, it's probably about the same population as Romania. Um, well, not now, but back then. Um, I don't know, man. I just, uh, I mean, you know, it's just, it's like problem solution. Yeah, what, what do you not want? Mm -hmm. I don't want people laughing at me, racial comments. I don't want them, you know, I don't want that. Okay, so how can you avoid that? Well, You know, my dad says if I'm if I'm smarter, if I'm stronger, if I'm faster, if I'm twice as good, just to be considered equal, I got to be twice as good because then if they want to speak up, I've got something to fall back on, which is yeah, Absolutely. but I ran faster than you, or I got a better grade than you, or whatever. You know, and my brother was really really smart, so um, I had to uh, I had to toe the line there too. So okay, so so you also had great obviously uh, role models in your life and yeah. uh, people guiding you and uh, maybe this is something that you had that it was 
you came with it in this life, let's say, with with this not passion, but uh, let's say just uh, this uh, ambition to just keep going, keep going, and never to look left or right. There right? has to be a way. There, like when you have when always, you, yeah. When you set a goal, or you and there's something that you want. You know, we talk about wants and needs, and I wanted to do X. There, there's there's a way. I don't know what that way is, but as I as I stay positive and I try to move forward every day, you know, you're going to have successes. All right. That motivates you. And you're going to have failures. You're like, mm, I guess that wasn't the way. Maybe I should try something else. Okay. I mean, you, you try, you, you got to try something more than I, I just, I just could never, could never, not even now. Even, even not when the doctor told me I was going to die. I was just like, yeah, well, that's what you think. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's got to be a way. I mean, you, I just, it has to be. I mean, that's, that's me. I guess I, maybe I'm stubborn like that, but I, I, so that that's the word because how do you get this mindset? How do you develop such a mindset? Um, I, I, you've always been like that. I mean, yeah, I just uh, there's wants and uh, uh, for me it's just problem solution. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't great in math, but uh, you know, doing calcul advanced calculus, <laughs> functions, relations, and algebra, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I wanted to. Poke Not your specialty. The, wanted to <laughs> poke myself in the eye half the time, <laughs> but there was always a solution. You know, and yeah. uh, so when you look at life's problems or you look at the things that you want in life, there's got to be a way there. You just have to find that way. And you just have to realize, I just think it's the realization, you, you have to be realistic. Is the, is the path going to be easy to what you want? Okay, so um, American football, there's 400 players out of 350 million people. So you have to be one in what? You have <sighs> one in a million. One in a million. How are yeah. you going to be one in a million? Right? Well, there's got to be a way. You just got to figure it out. Maybe it's political. Maybe it's uh, maybe you got to bring something to the table nobody else has, mm -hmm, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. So there always has to be a solution. Uh, you want to do film and television, or you want to do there has to be a way. So you just have to you, ha you have to be smart enough, I would think, to realize that it's not going to be easy. It's going to take time, and you're going to have failures along the way. But that that's okay because when you fail, you just figured out what not to do. You know, it's just like uh, it's like having brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know, when when yeah. when uh, when one of your brothers or sisters is getting ass whooping, you sort of go, you, you're taking notes, going, "Okay, I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon." <laughs> okay, good to know. Good to know. Be home at nine. Be yeah. home at nine. Because okay. else, look, nine oh one isn't uh, good enough. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. you you learn what to do, what not to do. I mean, I, I, how how simple it doesn't get any more simple than that. Exactly. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, I just for me, it's just simple logic. Yeah. Listening to you now, I just realized, talking about the mindset and sports and so on, you, you actually uh, had the same path that Arnold had, right? So going into sports or maybe translating from sports, yeah. the mindset to other fields in life, like Hollywood, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have the same approach? Or Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I wanted to do it. I had, uh, I, I, you know, while I was doing sport, doing this, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to get there. Let me finish this first and then I'm going to get there. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, gosh, talk about a great example of the mindset. Arnold was just like, who to thunk it, right? Talk about, look, look at that guy did. I mean, that's just amazing. Bill Bird does this great piece on Arnold when he's in his comedy routine talking about the guy didn't speak the language. He had to learn the language and he had to do this. And then the he had accent to do that. and so on. And yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he says, just name somebody. He's like, name somebody from the U.S. that's going to go to like Austria and learn the language. And then, be, you yeah, know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> Nobody. Right? And uh, so, yeah, I mean. That was the that was the mindset. I wanted to do it, and uh, again, there had to be a way, and you just have to find the way. And it's not going to be it's not going to be luck. I mean, luck, there is luck involved, of course, but uh, but if, the, if you can't deliver on the day, you're in trouble. In big trouble. <laughs> right? But uh, but Howard, this is one thing. What happens? Because I understand that it's you're always concentrated on solutions, let's say. Yeah, you've got problems and solutions. But uh, what happens in your mind and how do you feel when things do not go the way you want to go? Or maybe you said, yeah, you have bad days, whatever. Mm -hmm. oh, what happens in your mind? It's like, okay, I just have to keep going. I just have to struggle. Yeah, well, uh, I just I, I'm simply like, I literally just look at it like, you know, Something didn't go. And I, for example, I got my car towed the other day. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, and I was, I was pissed off. I was just like, you know what? But hey, I parked on the curb. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, what? <laughs> who, who am I really mad at? You know? Am I mad at the police or the tow truck guy? I parked on the curb. I shouldn't have parked on the curb. Other people, but other people are parked in the curb. And I could think of my dad going, well, other people don't live here. 
Like you're in my house, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, and uh, so you can't ever, you can't, you don't compare yourself to other people. You, you're responsible for your own actions. And so when I have a bad day, something didn't go the way I, I planned it to go, then you just take notes and they're going, okay, I guess that's not the way. Try something different. <laughs> but, but actually that is also one way, if you think about it, because yeah. it's one way that is showing you it's not the right result, let's exactly. say. Exactly. But it's a way. Yeah. Itself, it's a way, right? Absolutely. Just not the proper one for you to get the right results. Yeah, you might yeah. have to try. You might, maybe you got to try 10 different ways. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, I mean, I've, you know, I can think of, even now I can think of, I, I mean, I've got a good, good great story. Um, uh, so I, I want to do a, uh, so I saw Robbie Williams live at uh, Royal Albert Hall. Great okay. show. Great, okay. Great show. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to do that show here in Bucharest at the National Theater. I'm going to have the same setup and everything. And uh, I thought to myself, all right, uh, you know, that's a gigantic production. I mean, it's Robbie Williams, the National Theater in London, right? So I went about setting it up, and uh, I suppose putting the pieces together bit by bit. Now, Robbie Williams has got a 60, 70-piece orchestra, right? And, and he's got a musical director. And I watched the whole thing, and I watched it a couple of times. I said, yeah, I can do that. Uh, and I'm a better singer. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> and uh, But the thing is, with 60 or 70, like um, when you hear an orchestra play a song, mm -hmm. what, um, what you have is a score, right? Yeah. Every instrument, every instrument, clarinet, cello, everybody has their own sheet music, right? And it comes together. This is why we, you know, the orchestration and that, all those, all those uh, sheets of music combined are a score. A musical score is expansive, right? To have a score for 60, 70 instruments is expensive. Like, thousand two thousand three three thousand euros and uh i'm like <laughs> okay i don't have any of those <laughs> uh, you know i'm like, how am i gonna how am i gonna get scores for the songs yeah, that i want to yeah, do yeah right yeah and so i waited till the, i waited till the credits rolled yeah and i found out who robbie williams musical director was and uh i, I googled him you approach him yeah and i was just trying to figure out now, how do i get in contact with him you know, this guy's a Grammy winning. He's just an award winning. Steve, I'm sorry, I can't remember Steve's last name. But anyway, long story short, was I somehow, I can't remember how I did, but I got an email for him. And I emailed him and I said, listen, man, I, I mean, you don't know me from a hole in the wall. Uh, I wish we were sitting at a piano, you and I having a beer and I could tell you what my sort of dream is, the thing I want to do. But here's what I want to do. I want to recreate that. I need musical scores. Can you point me in a direction? And no response. I was in January. And mm -hmm. I, wrote, I emailed him 17 times. 17 times. 17 times I emailed him. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, in, let's see, that was in January. So in May. Okay. In May, he writes me an email. And okay. he goes, and all it's gotcha. one line. He says, okay, Howard, tell me more. That's right. That's what he said. And then I said, Great. so I'm like, I was wondering. <laughs> Whether... <laughs> Do you happen to have, like, Robbie did, like, uh, uh, there's, like, six or seven of those songs that I, I'd love to have the score. I'd love to have the score. Could I? Yeah. That would, that would, I mean, is there any possibility that, you know, um, you know, you're, I'm, I'm basically asking him for, you know, 10,000 euros, or at least in music kind of thing. And he writes me back after that and goes, would you like that in PDF form? That's exactly <laughs> what he said. Would you like that in PDF form? And I was, I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> please. And he sent me the score for uh, eight songs. Just like that. Just like that. Unbelievable. I know, it's crazy. So there's a way. I mean, <laughs> you, know, they, you know, you don't ask, you don't get. And if you ask once and they say no. Where there is a will, there's a there way. is a way. Right? Yeah. So you have to, I guess it depends on how badly you want to do something. I mean, and again, it's just problem solution. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so Howard, uh, because people in Romania, they uh, most of them, they know you for uh, the young and restless. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one that was like a never-ending movie, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you've also been in so many appearances also with uh, Seagull and uh, you've, um, yeah, you spent... Uh, so much time here in Romania shooting uh, all kinds of uh, movies. What was your, let's say, favorite one? Well, I have to say... My favorite one was, um, I don't even know the title of it, but I did it with Rennie Harlan, very, okay. f very famous director, and uh, did last year. And um, yeah, um, we always make a joke in Hollywood. Uh, we always make the, 
the African American people, the black people, we make a joke sort of like, yeah, they always kill a black guy in the end, you know, <laughs> black guy always gets killed somewhere, you know, you, you get a script and it's like, oh yeah, this is a good role, you know, you turn to page like four, oh, he shoots uh, me, okay, <laughs> okay, but in this particular one, I I, I lived throughout the whole script. I was just oh, like, this is great. <laughs> yes, and I even get I even get thrown out of a building on fire or something like that, land on a car, and uh, but I live, yeah, you know? so that was good. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> And Steven Seagal was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, every every gig is a lot of fun, even small movies. Like uh, I did one with, um, oh, what was his name? You're going to kill me for, Harachu, Harachu. <laughs> okay. Harachu Malele. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. great, uh, what a great guy he is. Um, and he did a film and I did a, I did a little cameo there. Um, with him that was that was a lot of fun too um it's just when you just you get an opportunity to do something that you love doing and you you know you just you give it your all but uh, looking back because yeah obviously for for let's say normal human beings (laughs) it's absolutely uh, impossible and incredible the achievements that uh, that uh, that you've had in your life by now uh what is the one that uh, let's say your most proud of so you're olympian you're a professional football player basketball player hollywood star uh, singer etc so many things but um and coach and coach yeah yeah what is the thing that you like most when you think back to all the achievements that you've had yeah i would say without question at the top of the list is is coaching for sure um is it yeah coaching uh, i love because co- Um, high performance. Uh, I'm I'm just a, you know, I'm just a specialist in, in taking athletes to a different level. Um, and I just think that's a combination of, uh, an education in that regard in terms of, um, not just being an athlete, but having, you know, met particular qualifications and, and degrees, if you will, uh, and experience, et cetera, but, and working with some of the best athletes in the world. But it's um, it's just great fun taking like a high schooler and making them great, or taking someone who's who's. I mean, for example, what do you do? Um, this is actually this is a great example. That I would ask any coach, um, especially in this country, um, <laughs> what would you do? How are you gonna make how are you gonna make Usain Bolt faster? Usain Bolt comes in. He's he's world record holder. He's nine fifty eight years coach now. Let's see. Let's see. What, what are you gonna do with him? That's Right. And it's sort of like, uh, I mean, I have the answer to the question. I know exactly what I do with them. I, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. I know exactly what I do with them. Um, and a lot of, a lot of coaches don't have that answer. And a lot of coaches, um, you know, coach, uh, you know, I, I just, I think I start thinking of the education issue. And it's just, um, I love coaching because it's an interpersonal skill thing and you can help people see their greatness and, You, know, you can help them develop the skill to be resilient. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I developed the skill to be resilient. Like when life kicks you in the butt, you know, you get back up again and you just you, you stay at it. And I love I love passing that down to people. I love to say, listen, I know I know you're down. I know it's a problem. I know you lost everything, but you know what? You're living and you're breathing. And as long as you as long as you're taking in oxygen, you've got a chance. Mm-hmm. You know. So let's let's just yeah, let's just one. build on that mm-hmm. one step at a time. We don't have to be a millionaire tomorrow. Yeah. Would you be yeah. happy being a millionaire next year, the year after that? I mean, you know, look at their age, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think that's why the coaching and the and the teaching, coaching and teaching are probably my favorite things to do. Um, But uh, I think uh, this preference that you have obviously comes, it, it's in a very tight connection or let's say uh, with your background and with your uh, experience. Because uh, like you said, what's your opinion of, um, uh, yeah, very... Um, I don't know, top athletes, let's say, yeah, that they had great results in their field, but then are they able, all of them, to pass on the experience and to become great coaches? No. Maybe not. No. And why not? Um, because they don't have it in them. Um, they What ha- do you mean, what they don't have it they in them? They don't him? have the, uh, I don't think they have the, the temperament, the empathy, the interpersonal okay. skills yeah, yeah, yeah. to actually to transfer that to you, you transfer mm-hmm. that. That's just, you know, it's, it's just like, just imagine, you know, from kindergarten till your last year in university, along the way you had teachers that you really liked and you really did well in their class. Why was that? Why? Because they had it, that whatever it something. was, yeah. whatever it was, they had that in them and you were like, yeah. And they, you know, you, yeah. could, you could just understand. And, uh, so a lot of, a lot of athletes, you know, even a lot of great athletes are, they had to be so, self-centered so focused 
and with, you know, with such drive to do, you know, X that they had, you know, when it was done and they reached their goal, they had no, no desire to, you know, I mean, they might've been bored and yeah, they'd be like, but, let me try and teach. Uh, I'm not very good at that. But when you get the best result, yeah. What, what can you achieve more than that? You know, that's the problem. That's the issue. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Or even, even for you as a coach, let's say that, that you get tomorrow to have the, whatever world champion, mm -hmm. and then you just need to restart and have a new cycle with the new world champion, you know, it's oh, yeah. going to take a lot of absolutely. mental strength to just restart again a new cycle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. maybe not. Huh? No, I mean, it's just, again, it's just, uh, you know, it's, for me, it's like everything boils down to everything from cooking, just think about it, from cooking, the basics of cooking to, uh, to cryptocurrency. Okay, right? just, interesting. Just, just everything boils down to math. Oh, is it? Everything boils down to math at the end of the day. You know, when I'm, when I'm, as an athlete, you're talking about sets and reps and time intervals. And, you know, you know from triathlon. Yeah. Uh, in cooking, ounces, grams, like time in the oven, uh, how long do we do Mathematics. this? Um, ma everything comes down to, to Mathematics, math. yeah. Everything, yeah, yeah, no yeah. matter what it is. And, uh, um, and even, you know, even, and like I say, coaching, in, interpersonal skills, psychology, you know, the empathy, it's all, it's all mathematical in terms of, you know, if you can boil it down to math in terms of how you deal with people, you know, um, and again, coaches, some coaches have it, some coaches don't. Some coaches just want to do it their way and, and it's, the, uh, you know, other, do it my way or, or the lost. highway. Yeah. <laughs> or the highway. The, yeah. <laughs> and get lost. And other coaches are like, no, not, no, yeah, listen, let's, you know, yeah. I, there's something. And just imagine, do you, do you know what it does to an athlete, to an athlete when you can just sort of, you know, you, you see something there. There's something there. And you let them know. I, I, you know, I know you. I've been watching you for a little while. And you, I see you working very hard. And I know you're not getting the results you want. But you know what? You keep at it. Because there's something there. There's something there. You know, it's like, In remember, one day, yeah. remember when, uh, you know, we all have great, you know, grandma, great grandma or something like that. And maybe you were her, her favorite, you know, her favorite little grandson or something like that. Because she saw, she saw something special yeah. in you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We all, I mean, it's there. You know? Yeah, it's, it's the same. There. It's the, the same. same thing. The same. And you, yeah. you know, grandma saw it. Grandma saw something, yeah, you know, and uh, so so when you when you and you can approach an athlete or a, a student or something like that with that, let them know there's something there, and if if you want, you, know, you can take it to the next level. Yeah, and that obviously has to do also again with you because you have the ability to see something in them that actually resides in you. Yeah, that's yeah. the trick. You yeah. can't see something in others if you haven't if you and don't you have, have it yourself. within you. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so, but you're right. You yeah. can't see something in others because obviously they don't even know about that ability, let's say, right? Right. Uh, but, right. but for me, what was really interesting, what you mentioned before uh, in regard to uh, coaching and to passing on the experience, what you mentioned about Michael Jordan, and that I wanted to please repeat because I, because oh. I, let's say, that was not uh, live, yeah? So yeah. that was, um, you know, I, I saw an interview with Michael Jordan and he made a really great point. He said, some, he, somebody asked him about coaching and he's yeah. like, he was like, yeah, coaching's not for me. Yeah. And, and they asked him, well, why? And he said, because... He felt it would be unfair to have expectations upon those that he's coaching um, that he had for himself. He said, it would be unfair for me to impose my will, the way I trained my, my demand for excellence my, you know, he, on somebody else because man, they're not, maybe they're not built that way. Absolutely. They're not built Incredible. that way. And uh, if, I, if I try to impose that upon them, it's going to be bad. <laughs> really bad. So the standard was so high for him that he's just, yeah, he to, yeah. he's just, yeah, he, he's, he's saying, I can't, the standard that I had for myself, I'm going to want to impose, if I'm coaching, I'm going to want to impose that yeah, on others. Yeah, for my athletes, yeah. Like, how can, you, how can you, you know, he's talking to, he'd be talking to his players going, how can you not? And they're looking at him like, well, you're Michael Jordan, right. and I'm not Michael uh, Jordan, uh, you know? He's a guy crazy, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I thought it was very interesting. I thought, yeah, you know, that's, that's really interesting. But but you've been around because I remember all the time if I send you one message like uh, Howard look this coach or look this athlete yeah I know the guy I know the method I know the coach I've been there and then you send me all the yeah uh, proof and arguments uh, so you've been around so many uh, athletes and coaches top top level yeah yeah what have you seen f uh, just working and being around them and also from your experience you that they have in common obviously yeah of course passion and hard work but is there something like I don't know do you need to yeah, the, I mean, the common denominators would be um, hard work for sure uh, in terms of 
willingness to be the first one to practice, the last one to leave. Um, there's nothing like that. You know, there's nothing like, I mean, I was like that. People that I trained with were like that. Um, and that was, that was my expectation. You know, I mean, we used to make, when I was, when I was actually competing, we used to make uh, jokes, the guys that I would hang out with and would want to come and work out with us, you know, sort of like uh, maybe a different sport kind of guy. And they'd laugh because they say, well, we, we couldn't make it through his warm up. you know? Um, so it, it <laughs> the common denominator is hard work, definitely. And then the other common denominator is, uh, you know, a great coach. You know, the great, uh, a coach who sees, you know, who has a plan. Mm-hmm. Got to have a plan. A coach has to have a plan. And a coach, there's nothing, there's nothing better than knowing why you're doing what you're doing. But I know why I'm doing And that was actually sort of, the, and that's why, I mean, I didn't have great coaches coaching me um, when I was in high school or university. I did not. I learned some things from people and learned what not to do. But uh, it, when you have a coach who can see that special thing in you, who knows what he's doing, who wants to put a plan together, and who is more than willing to explain to you, okay, listen, we're going to do this, and this is why we're doing it. Man, you just motivated. Like, okay, yeah, all right. So I, if I do this, then this is going to happen? Absolutely. And then they do it, and that happens, and then they're just, they're just hungry for more. Yo. They're just like, well, what else can I do? Yeah. Right? And you just send, if, if you have any kind of intellect or experience, knowledge in the event, in the area, you can, you can give them all kinds of, oh, it's like, let me give you a thousand different things here. Okay. So let's just put it all into a plan, you know, a Tudor Bomba plan. And, uh, ah. <laughs> and, uh, and let, let's, let's go on to success. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's no different than financial planning at the home. You know, it's no, it's no different than, uh, um, you know, your, your finances at work, uh, getting, getting, how much you're getting paid at a job. Again, we, all the math starts working its way into things. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. So actually you, you, you have the same, let's say energy or you are the same, but you cannot be one person in sports, one person in business and a different person in whatever academic. Correct. You, you have the same approach and the same, um, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, whatever understanding and, uh, yeah, strategy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Across all disciplines in your life. Absolutely. And that, that is why you are able or um, to translate them from so the different. Next. Yeah. From so different um, disciplines, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now, because you already mentioned some uh, some names here, yeah. <laughs> so coming, because I'm, I'm still interested and curious to find out uh, the, 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 the secret methods, let's say, of uh, how Americans train to, to run that fast and to jump that high and so on. But um, I want to come a little bit closer to our, uh, let's say, current situation and to Romania, because uh, you've been for quite a while here in Romania, and you've seen, uh, let's say, some things here in Romania. What's your take about what do you see here in Romania comparing to U.S.? I mean, come on, Howard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take a sip. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, this is actually scotch. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, wow. Um, Romanians are in athletics, in, in all sport, in sport, Romanians are talented amongst the most talented I've ever seen. Just as equally talented to the Americans, um, some more so. Um, the problem I found here um, is instruction, coaching, especially coaching education. The system itself. The, 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 the system is not very impressive. Yeah. But, you know, you can have a crummy system, but if you have great coaches in it, you're still going to get great results. Mm-hmm. And I've just watched, you know, I've seen for, for years and years uh, following people and um, seeing them on occasion, et cetera. And, I'm, and you know, the results don't lie. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about athletics. Okay. Um, you know, you got the same people, you know, they ran time X when they were 17. Now they're 23 and they're running slower. Why is that? Uh, you know, and again, <laughs> that's, that's coaching. Um, if they're, you know, it, Romania has great results and, you know, they do, they do have really f- for a small country, they have great results in junior and, you know, university games, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, Balkans, you know, for under 23 and all yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. The results are like impressive. Right. But as soon as that teenager at 19, as soon as that boy at 19 goes to 20, now he's a man and that girl goes to a woman, 19 to 20, it just goes into the toilet. Um, and there are few, there are, there are, there are people who have not, there's exceptions to everything, exceptions to every rule. Thank God for women in Romania in terms of their participation in athletics, because if it wasn't for the women in athletics, you know, or in sport in Romania, for goodness sake, um, Romania wouldn't have any kind of sports, you know, um, 
legacy. But um, yeah, there's just no, uh, there's, there's, I've never seen so many aunts, uncles, grandmas, cousins, former athletes, experts, you know, uh, experts uh, in uh, <laughs> weightlifting, uh, athletics, training, nutrition in my life. You know, everybody, thinks, everybody knows, eh? everybody thinks they know. And you know what? This is, I, this is, this is actually a perfect example. I said to my athlete, I said, listen, you know what? See those two people over there? Yeah. And see that coach? So we got two sprinters and a coach. And I said, you know what? I could send over right now. I could, I could, I could have Usain Bolt and Daphne Sheepers walk over there and talk to those, talk to those three people and talk to them about how to get faster and how to get better. And it would go in one ear and out the other. They'd just like, be like, they'd yeah. just be like, they'd be excited to see them, maybe get an autograph, a selfie so they could put it on Instagram, but they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't heed. They'd think they'd know more. Yeah. I know better. They know better. Yeah, they know better, and that's why you know I, I can't I can't imagine a, an athletics track and field symposium here because it wouldn't matter who you brought. Uh, Romanian coaches think they know better, and I, and and I, it's for me it's such an insult because if they knew better, then they'd have results. Yeah, and they have none. You should see the results, yeah. right? You'd see yeah, you see it in the. I mean, there, there should be European, World, and Olympic champions in, in athletics for Romanians. They're that good. Yeah, they are that Which good. Which we do not see. Um, we, we do we not, do not see, see yeah except uh, the women have done amazingly you know like you have gabriel zabo who obviously is a phenom um you know you've got uh the, we've got great women in distance yeah constantina did in marathon uh, and, Olympic oh yeah golf. constantina right look at that um you know, yeah. so you've got her and then you've got uh you've got you've got some it's, what's interesting is why is it for example some of our better female athletes mm-hmm. maybe maybe a male or two i don't know train outside of romania Train in, Why? train in Germany, train in different countries. Like we got a long jumper, triple jumper, you know, and they, they don't train in Romania because the, the again, the, the, the coaching, the coaching structure is just, yeah, I wish, I just wish they, and they all want to complain. Oh, we've got no money. Well, if you don't have, okay, if there's no money, then don't coach. I'd rather have a coach. Uh, Why do you do it? Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have a coach who's like, uh, you know, he's not like, are you coaching for the money? We don't have yeah. any money. I mean, is that why you're coaching? Yeah. Um, are you coaching? Because you want to give back, you want to help, and if you want to help, then you know get an education. You yeah, know, get an education to truly help. Um, but I just don't see it. Yeah, but the one thing because you also mentioned another, uh, yeah, Tudor Bompa. You you oh. mentioned yeah. So yeah. I've seen it also with, uh, talking to different uh, colleagues. Let's say that they had no clue about this guy. I mean, uh, and how is that possible? That's like that's like uh, I don't care what coach it is in Romania I don't care what sport it is how can you not know who Tudor Bomba is how, yeah. how do you not that's like saying uh, that's like saying you're a boxer yeah I'm a boxing I'm a boxing coach and you've never heard of Muhammad Ali I mean and you go you know boxing coach you don't, you've never heard you know what I mean yeah I mean yeah. Tudor Bomba is like eh, I mean yeah, I mean the periodization yeah the father of yeah right the father of yeah, uh, actually, he he revised it from uh, from a Russian, the, the, the Russian I can't remember his last name, uh, came came up with sort of like the skeleton for periodization. Yeah. Tudor came in and refined it and made the it system, what, yeah, made it what it is. And uh, yeah, to not know who he is, not know periodization, I I just don't see it. I just don't see it here. I'm, I'm just I'm crushed that they don't know their own countrymen. Yeah, but but I think this is also again connected to the phenomenon of uh, I know everything. I do not need to know. Correct. More or whatever, yeah. yeah. But have you seen this, uh, let's say, attitude also in uh, US or? No, 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 not at all. Athletes, uh, athletes uh, are at a different level in terms of uh, wanting to know knowledge um, and wanting to talk to somebody credible um, and train with train with you know uh, with credible people, yeah. um, and and coaches want to learn more. Coaches are just absolutely, you know, coaches, we talk, we, we talk to each other all the time. Like, so wait, listen, you know, that quarter mile workout, what are you doing? You know, how is that? I mean, because it doesn't matter what the secret formula coaching wise is. You have to be able to implement it, you know? <laughs> so here you have the world record holder in the 400 meters or the 400 meter hurdles or whatever. And their coaches coach X and coach X says, yep, here's our plan. This is what we do all year long. Okay. So you look at that plan and you have to have the intelligence to sort of go, all right, well, my guy's not ready to do that at those, that speed, those intervals, et cetera. Now I've got to, I've got to tone that down. How do I adjust that program? You've just been given the program from the best in the world, the world record holder. All right. And now how do you adjust uh, it? How do you, how do you adjust it to fit yours? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and how do you, how do you apply it? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, who's really, um, I haven't met uh, the gentleman and I can't remember his name, 
but uh, our young 17-year-old swimmer who has the world record in uh, yeah David Popovic yeah his coach is uh, was um, Adrian Rodulescu uh, he was he's very he was very open to going out and seeing what was happening in the world yeah absolutely in, in terms of uh, what are swim what are the best swimmers doing you know and I'm sort of like well no surprise he's open yeah, yeah. I mean no surprise no surprise the results, his, yeah. his, the results of because yeah. uh, like I said Romanian athletes are so amazing they should be world record holders they should be world champions in so many gifted, different events yeah. because they're gifted there you have an athlete who's gifted with a coach who's open to learning and, and applying go. applying what he sees I mean doesn't yeah. get any better than that and God, you know God bless his coach for having the you know having that openness to go out and learn things and, and want to know you know what are the best people doing yeah yeah but uh, yeah because uh, one thing that I'm saying uh, yeah many times like listen the Americans are always trying to you know every small detail they want to optimize every small detail they, they are just you know recording and filming you know even the each Uh, turn that you take, even each move that you make, ev everything, you know, yeah. just to optimize every second, right? Yeah. And they say, yeah, but, you know, that's crap or that's useless. Or say, and I always say, like, okay, they are stupid. We know better. Right. But the results, you know. Yeah, are twice as good. Yeah. yeah. And so then... Yeah, again, what are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, problem solution. The problem, uh, the problem is lack of coaching education. Um, and the problem is coaching ego solution. Is uh, you know, I think it's much more about big egos, right? Well, definitely. I mean, I, I, every coach wants to walk her. It's unfortunate because these coaches want to. Walk. It's so it's it's so different in the U.S. Um, you know, here these coaches want to walk around like there's somebody. Like you have to respect me because I have the fastest man or woman in Romania. You know, yeah, want, yeah, yeah, yeah. It defeats their ego, you know. Or I have the best of junior this, junior that, and nobody. I don't. Nobody gives a crap. But they just they just want to walk, you know. I, I say it in in Romania, coaches are up here and athletes are down here, and in the rest of the world, athletes are up here and coaches are here. The athlete gets to select the coach. The athlete decides, right? And the and and the coaches the coaches here are just it's un, it's just unfortunate. They just don't want to listen. They think they know everything, and uh, unfortunately, their their results show that. Uh, I mean, I wish I was wrong, but I mean, if you look historically, like you're going to have the you're going to have the The occasional, um, you know, person that uh, what's what, what's the term? I can't remember. My English is <laughs> my English leaves me sometimes. But uh, you, if you look historically at the line, you'll see that junior results are good. Da -da 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 -da. Junior results are very very nice. And then at, right at 20, it just drops into the toilet. It doesn't drop in the toilet for everybody, but on average, in terms of majority, the majority drop in the toilet. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's. I mean, there's a reason for that. The reason is these coaches don't know how to take them to the next level. Yeah, but that is a very tough transition, right? From 19, like you said, uh, to 20, 20 plus. So. Yeah, but they, they're, this is now, and, and unfortunately, you know, I, I give coaches more credit than they probably deserve when they're coaching juniors because that's exactly true. Because while you're coaching them as a junior, you should be preparing them for that transition. Mm -hmm. To get them ready for that transition yeah absolutely it's not, it's not sort of like okay you've trained them oh, i got the best 19 year old hey you're 20 now oh well can't help you um you know yeah. and you go you go in uh, you go in the real world and start getting just stomped on by everybody yeah, yeah. and that coach just shakes well you didn't listen to me yeah you didn't listen to me you didn't do what i said so uh the method was good but you are not obedient right, right? <laughs> and i'm just yeah. like oh but can you also burn them too early can you burn them the athletes too early Oh, absolutely yeah Without question. Mentally and physically also, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mentally especially. You can't beat them into the ground. But again, you beat them into the ground because, you know, it's just this, um, uh, I get, it's like, I see some of these coaches that are older. This is communist thing where I'm up here, you're down there, you do what I say. Coach, so a lot of these coaches coach just so they can order people around. You do what I say. Because I listen to the way they talk to people to practice. And I'm like, oh my goodness, if that was my son or daughter out there and you as a coach, were I, I heard you speaking to somebody like that, I'd be, like, in, I'd be in jail. And you wouldn't be alive. I mean, you know, the way they speak, the way they speak half the time. But, you know, it's just this communist kind of like beat you down. Hi, 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 hi. You yeah. know, you got to do, on, do what on. I say, do what I say now and just yeah. shut up and, you know, hi, do hi, it. Hi. And it's like. Is that the military style, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and again, you know, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar or something like that. Yeah, in terms yeah, of, yeah. Now that doesn't mean you got to be like the sweetest little thing talking. You, say, you, you have to, you and your athlete have a goal. Whether you're a basketball player, athlete, you have a goal, and that goal is 
here. And you need, as a coach, I need to explain to you how we're getting there. And I need to explain to you why we're doing what we're doing. You can't just blindly do what I tell you to do. You can't do it. And that's just the, and that's what the majority of these athletes do. They, they blindly go, yeah, you know, do what they're told. And then when without the, asking, yeah, right, and they do it for years and years yeah. and years. And then when they're, they're 23, 24, 25, and they haven't got anywhere, the coach goes, well, you didn't listen. Give me a new person. And they start with a 17 year old. Yeah. And it makes me want to just, you know, slip my wrists. But just to make a comparison, is the U.S. method, like back in U.S., uh, are they, you know, using the same uh, methodology of uh, being like in the army or? Oh, no, no, it's no. Much no. It's, it's much more communicative. Uh, inf- it's much more informative. Okay. Much more informative. You know why you're doing what you're doing. Now, one of the, that being said, as, as an institution, like at a university, for example, yeah. you know, college, and, well, not so much a college, but at a university, Uh, those institutions, you and you, uh, we're giving you a scholarship. We're recruiting, right? You are you are basically, if you're in athletics, you are basically sort of a piece of meat, yeah. you know, because uh, I need to get everything I can out of you. It's more of a bit. It's more of a business from a business sense. You got to go to school and get some grades, but, but uh, listen. You're, by the way, uh, I know you're a sprinter and yeah. I know you're a specialist in the hundred, but you're going to run the hundred, the two hundred, the four hundred, and I'm going to put you on the four by four relay and the four by one. And you're like, why? Because we have to squeeze out everything, right? Right. And so what happens is, you know, like when you look at uh, some of the youngsters in Tokyo, the Americans, uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, the two hundred meter runner. I can't remember from Kentucky. Uh, eluding me right now but uh you know uh, you're looking at ncaa ncaa athlete will run between september and june like 50 races uh, a romanian athlete between september and june will What, run five six five six, six seven so maybe let's say let's go on maybe 10 let's, let's say 10 and how is that possible yeah. and and one more thing because you didn't mention the level of competition yeah Because I do not think that they have the same competitors as you, as you have in Germany or, for example, in the U.S. No, no. no. Isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and I, don't know why, I don't know why people here don't train more together in terms of uh, you know, like a group of the fastest here. Yeah, because then if I show you what I'm doing, then you're going to find my secret methodology, you know, and then I'm going to be exposed. Right. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Because it's, it's, somebody asked, like, listen, why are you putting out, you know, that whatever session that you're doing? Because people will find out. And I say, what? I say, what? <laughs> Is it about a single session that they are doing and then they're yeah, becoming yeah, champions? Yeah, and they're going to be no, Superman. Come on. <laughs> come it takes, on. It takes a whole lot more than that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could train them for years and still, there's still so much to teach. I mean, my, one, my, my, uh, one of the guys I'm working with is, uh, We spent two years just learning how to run correctly. Okay, that's it. And I and uh, and we've and we've improved every you know every race we've improved. So we're faster now than we were t- two years ago. But that's not that wasn't the goal to be faster. The goal that was to learn to run correctly. Because when you learn to do that correctly, when you learn to exert a force correctly, then there is no ceiling on how high you can go. But if you're not technically sound, there's definitely a ceiling. Because you do not have efficiency and you're just losing, exactly. right? Exactly. You're just wasting the energy that exactly. you're producing. Efficiency is the key there. Yeah. Again, it boils is. down to numbers. You're yeah. not efficient. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're, yeah. You're all, those, all the coefficients are uh, maxed. But, yeah, we don't want to give names. But anyway, I remember to um, uh, some uh, situations and some races that you told me. That, okay, maybe he got, yeah, he understood the movement, the right way to do it. But then it also comes into the game, the mental aspect, right? Oh, absolutely. Because you can keep up, yeah, whatever, half, whatever, maybe three quarters, but then you just lose it, right? Because mm-hmm. then the mind is still not conditioned to that level that you need to, right? right? Exactly. Oh, so then so how true. do you do that, Howard? Because it's, that's a game, like you said, for long term. It's not just yeah, one well, season. Well, that's, you know, operant conditioning. That's, um, again, that all starts with... Uh, I mean, what kind of mental, what kind of mental ability, strength-wise, do you have when someone when someone's screaming high, 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 <laughs> and and you're and you in a certain, you're in an environment where you're just you're just told shut up, do what I tell you to do. Okay, so w- what options does your mental, like where's your mental growth going to occur? Yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna occur. You're a dog on a leash. Mm, yeah, that's it. Where's your mental growth gonna? However, if I if I'm If I'm teaching you the entire time, not barking orders at you, if I'm teaching you and letting you know that you do this for this reason and that for this reason and, uh, and say, hey, look, remember last, last, last year at this time, you're only able to do this now, this year. And now look. See, look, look what's happening, right, in terms of, and 
whether it's nutritionally or in the weight room or on the track or I mean, there's all the variables, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. You just your your mental growth is just like exponential. Yeah, you just like, you know what? Okay, that guy might be bigger, but I've got better turnover. So I'm, I wonder if that's gonna, you know, or that guy might be stronger, but I've got a, you know, and and I and you say all the time, you know, it's just like, what is the magic formula? We don't, you don't know. There is none there actually. Is none. Right? There is no magic formula. It's just hard work, you know? Hard work and a plan. Yeah, as, and a as, plan. And as long as you have a plan, then... Because I see guys that did you, okay, I'm going to go for a run, and then I'll go for a run, for another one. For a, yeah, but what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, you know? Running every day, yeah. hoping that you'll get faster, faster, you know? Right. I think you'll get injured first. <laughs> no plan. Before, before yeah. getting faster. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, uh, for me, it's uh, really interesting because uh, I see many times and I've seen you also on the track, uh, like uh, yeah, sometimes it's like, what are you doing here? You know, what is this training? You know, what was this session about? Because I don't see the hard work all the time. I don't see like killing yourself all the time out there. So what are you actually doing with the athletes? Sometimes it, it's, it looks to me like you're, you're doing something like for fun sometimes. Yeah, you know, every now and again, you just sort of... Uh it's really great when you come to practice and you know what you have to do. So here we're at practice and my methodology is, okay, here's what we'd like to accomplish today. This, this distance, this number of reps in this time with this rest interval, that's our goal. Now, um, okay, so maybe, maybe it's like, okay, we warm up and uh, get yourself ready. And a lot of times, you, I mean, come on now, depend, unless, they're, unless they're like in grade school, you should know how to warm up. If you don't know how to warm up, come talk to me. I'm only going to tell you once. I mean, come on, we, you're, you're, you've stepped up the game now. So I'm, I'm assuming that you know how to warm up. So I need you to warm up because I've showed you what we got to get ready for. And, and we work, and we work our way through that. And it's going to be, you know, if it's a hard workout, it's going to be a struggle. Um, but it's okay. You, you work your way through that struggle, and you don't yell and scream. You know, you got to talk. You just have to go over and talk to people sometimes. And you have to walk with them and talk with them and say, listen, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know you are hurting right now. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Let's compare this to a race. You've got 400 meters. You're going down the back stretch or you're coming up the front stretch, right? This is where this is going to pay off for you. And then you just sort of get them up again and then they hit the next one. Now you could have the same workout. You come to, you come to workout and I'm watching you warm up and you know what? You know, you don't seem to be, you don't have the energy Something's wrong. Hi, I'm just talking to you a little bit. And I find out that maybe you had a fight with the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the parents or something really, you know, bugging in your life. And you know what? Yeah, today, why don't you just warm up, do a little stretch and go home. We'll get back at this tomorrow. I mean, so you're that flexible. Yeah. I mean, what's the use of me trying to beat you like a dog to get a workout out of you? Makes no sense, right? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. I mean, if I could do anything over in my career, um, one thing I would have done for sure is rest more. Rest more. Would have rested more. I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big rest fan. Because you like to work hard all the time, I right? Like to, yeah. So it's like, so when we're going, we're going, right? But when you're resting, oh, we're resting. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. I need you to, I need you to come back and I need you to come back and give me that rep at that distance, at that speed again. Now, when you're ready to do it again, come back and see me, you know, within a certain constraint, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and so that, that's the goal. And when you, set, when you have parameters and you have a plan and you have a goal and you're sharing that information, man, workout just goes like people just love the workout. Mm-hmm. Just sort of like that. Cause, enjoying cause it, every yeah. rep is, there's a goal in mind. It's yeah, not yeah. just this mindless. Mm, it's like a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. What was the time? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You know, they, they know. And, and it's also a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, but also what you've what you've said before. Actually, I think it's uh, what they are referring to: working too much in the gray zone, right, and not doing quality stuff, and yes. then easy stuff, right? Yeah. If you want, I mean, they, you want to run fast, you got to train fast. I love uh, uh, Sebastian Coe's dad is a trainer. Yeah. Um, he had he's I've read some great articles from him, and he was just again I, I love reading it because we're sort of the same philosophy. If you want to run fast, you got to train fast, and you've got to you've got to train hard and rest hard. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not going to be, you're not going to train at 80% and all of a sudden show up to a competition and, and run 110%. doesn't no, happen. Never. If you, if you didn't do it, like when I spent uh, all those years with John Smith and Maurice Green and everybody, I mean, these guys would set world records in practice. 
And there's a group of the group of athletes, and you know, so you've got Otto Bolden, Maurice Green, Quincy Watts. You've got all these guys, and we're doing repeat 200s. And these guys are running like I mean, in practice, in practice. So they are mind knew that it's possible because well, they yeah, have already well, they're, achieved they're, it. Yeah. So when it's like, okay, we're going all out today. We're doing we're doing six all out. Uh, it's not, okay, and you're just like all out means. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's sort of like, okay. And now some days, some days, some days you don't, you don't run out all, you don't run all out all the time, but you have those moments because if you don't know it in practice, you know, it's a slap in the face to find it in a race. Let me tell you, you know, when your hamstrings pulling and your, your, yeah, you don't know what you know, to your, do. Yeah. Your, your glutes are making, oh my, what is yeah. that? You know, you're just, yeah. So should I, should I keep pushing or not? Yeah. I always remember that uh, you were telling me uh, the mentality of racing on the track. And you always said like you had a guy and uh, you said, okay, suck it up and follow. Right. right? How did you say? Yeah. yeah. I just, yeah, listen. just, like, just, just, you've just, you got to find a way. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and it's, it's only 400 meters. Just, you got to just embrace it. Huh? Yeah. You can break and you. And because you're capable and you, and, and, and now you're, you're training at, you know, you're training at sort of like an elite level where you're, if you're competing as a junior or a senior, if you're competing, that's elite. And um, you've got to, you have it within you. You just got to find this relationship with pain, right? You know, so it's like when you're sucking air. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, of course I'd love to stop. Of course I'd love to stop. I'd love to stop, have a donut, you know, <laughs> sit down, have a Coke with me, you know, have a Coke and a smile, you know, hey, keep going, fellas. You know, I'd love to do that, but you can't. You've got to focus because you're going to get to a race time where you're going to want to stop in a race. You're going to, you're not, you're not going to want to, you can, you are physically capable of going faster um, coming down the straightaway or doing uh, wherever you are, you are physically capable of doing it. But when you don't, it's because the mind wasn't. That's, that's my philosophy. The mind was not. The mind was like you know those those, those people the, yeah. those people who are just like oh they like, give up oh yeah. they give up and then you have those people who are just like oh I just love this yeah. pain you know <laughs> just let me just they enjoy yeah, yeah, yeah they, they enjoy, enjoy the pain they yeah. enjoy they enjoy that mental battle yeah yeah yeah, you know, yeah. It's, the, it's, it's it's really interesting but but maybe that again you have it or you don't yeah I think it's, yes. It's really difficult to let's say practice that to enjoying the pain. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can. Well, you can, you can develop it. It takes, uh, it it takes some time, but you can, you can develop it. And that's actually my my athlete now. I mean, we're doing, we're doing. Uh, we did a workout the other day. It was um, about ninety percent. Yeah, we had a 200, 150, and a one hundred. Ninety percent all out. Five minutes rest in between. Um, a year ago. After one set, he'd just be he'd be on the ground, just like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I can do another one. I'm like this. Now he does three sets, and at the end of the third set, he's just like, okay, he's like yeah. he's he's not on the ground. He's not yeah. like, oh, that was killing me. He's just like, he got stronger. He got stronger. He got stronger. Right. He got, yeah, absolutely. Right? And so it takes time. It takes time. But what kind of methods, because I'm interested, okay, so we are talking much more for, for the guys listening to us, much more on the short, let's say, um, uh, distances, right? Uh, but nevertheless, it's really interesting to to see the methods because then we can apply it to longer distances also. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so what are the, let's say, favorite yeah, whatever tricks and methods uh, to get a runner, yeah, faster and stronger in regard to training. For example, will you send a runner to the gym to lift weights, do squats and so on? Absolutely, yeah, yeah? we definitely. So now we're talking about sports specific training, okay? Right, uh, whether we're in the weight room, um, we're, uh, whether we're in the weight room running hills, uh, doing gymnastic stuff. Okay, uh, so we have weights, hills, yeah. yeah? Um, and gymnastics, and gymnastic stuff. Like, look at it. I mean, a gym, gym. I think pound for pound, a gymnast is one of the strongest people in the world, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, when you look at their their abilities, yeah. But um, especially their athletic abilities. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, the single biggest trick. Um, it's not really a trick. The single biggest thing, if you want to run fast, is to practice running fast. Basically, because if you don't practice, if you don't practice, you're not you don't you're not ready for it. I mean, you can't. You, again. We do it in distance. In distance, when you're when you're, it's the same thing. It's the same thing in distance. Like uh, you're setting pace. You don't you don't uh, you don't you don't set six minute six minute kilometer pace. You know, and that's how you train six minute kilometer pace. That's your program, and then expect to go into a race and do four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> Absolutely, that's <laughs> right. insane. Right, yeah. right. So you train at you know you're always trying to train at a faster a faster interval because you know when race time comes you know you're just gonna you yeah you the, little, the body bit, has to be ready right? right a little bit more and so yeah it's just, the short stuff is the same as well you know it all again it all comes down to the numbers. 
Yeah. Right. So, uh, because somebody asked me about that and I also mentioned heels and I was like, why are you running heels when, you know, you're running on flat? And I was like, you got it all wrong, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Hills, I mean, <clears throat> hills are, hills are a great workout. It's labor intensive. Um, yeah. It's like, I mean, if you could, if you could, if you could just imagine, I mean, this, this here's a really stupid example, but just imagine if uh, you had, you know, a belt on and you're going to go for a 10k run yeah you've got, you've got a belt on and there's a rope and you're pulling a guy standing on a skateboard behind you for 10 kilometers i mean you know then when you undo that belt how, how yeah. you're gonna fly you're gonna fly you're gonna fly i mean it's sort of crazy as that is but that's you know it's just resistance training that's re- yeah resistance, resistance training. training so yeah. hills are great resistance training for for sprinters and and uh you know for distance stuff oh gosh but looking at pictures looking at pictures let's say of yours yeah and also other athletes because this is one uh, mentality that maybe i want you to shed some light upon mm-hmm. because uh, it's somebody that yeah, I, I have to be lighter i have to be so slim right but maybe it's not all the time that concept you know but because i think it's stronger the the, yeah, the but, idea right without question yeah it's not about question. lighter right no I, it's ne- I, to me it's net well to me it's never about lighter um you know, one person who got in trouble for that okay. was uh, Alberto Salazar. Okay. When he was with, with Nike, right? And uh, so the uh, it was it's a it's a sort of famous story. The U.S. champ in, in women's high school who was who beat women's national like she was the fastest, right? She got there. She goes to Team Nike, and Alberto Salazar is trying to take her to the next level, which is only like a little bit away from her, right? Just keep her on the line she's going. And he's making her lose like five kilos, 10 kilos. Just, just, it was just, it was just abuse. And that's why he got fired. And that's what, because it was abuse. That's and, too much. Yeah. yeah. And he was just like saying, you know, and he was going with the philosophy that lighter is better. And then it was, and clearly it wasn't because when she was her normal weight running in high school, she was still national champion. Exactly. So why don't we just continue on that line? And if there's going to be weight loss, let it happen naturally. Right. Um, I mean, it's just I've never seen a situation where, uh, you know, people want to go lighter is better. I mean, OK, so again, let's let's break it down. How much lighter? Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. How, how much lighter? So how much lighter? Uh, yeah. Like how much are we talking about? So can you tell me that if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm five kilos lighter than I'm going to run? 34 seconds faster. Faster, yeah. I mean, can you, 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 need to, you need to prove this to me. You need to show me this. Um, I need to see it. I'm not going to take a hand, take your word for it, because perhaps that, uh, you know, ha- perhaps that weight is what I need. I need that weight uh, for strength. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe, my, maybe my strength is my strength. Yeah, that's my strength. Yeah, right? yeah. That's my strength my is my strength. Yeah. That- so if you take that away from me, now I've got to start over and either I have to develop something different to compensate. To compensate for what you've taken away. Yeah. What you've taken away. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I don't know how long that's going to take or if that's actually even useful. I, I mean, you don't know. Um, but if you can't guarantee it to me, if you can't give me an example, if you can't show me, show me some science that says that's going to happen, then, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If it ain't broke. Yeah, <laughs> don't fix it. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, that's how I look yeah, at it. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the same principle, because I'm much more involved in, yeah, into the long distance. Yeah. Yeah, I think the same applies there, because many people, they just want to be the lightest that they can be, you know, but they just then neglect, for example, strength, you know. And I was like, listen, just make, you know, what's your strength, you know, on the bike, whatever, on the run, you know, just like improve that much, you know, improve that much and forget about losing two kilos, two kgs you know because right. that's not the point you know and if you train correctly you're gonna you're gonna lose that your Naturally, body's, your body's right? gonna compensate for yeah. the way you're training yeah on your plan correctly and maybe that two kilos will go um yeah naturally. the way it's supposed to go exactly. naturally instead of starvation and then suffer through the workout absolutely yeah yeah, yeah i agree completely so uh, i think you do not need to to study that much to understand this basic principle right well it's, yeah it is basic i mean to me it's it's just logic yeah, and again, if you want to show me some kind of scientific study that says, okay, I mean, I mean, I'm, most people think I'm like eighty kilos, you know, say because I'm long and lean, but I'm a hundred kilos, right? So if I had to drop twenty kilos and go bobsledding, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be pushing very fast. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. You know I, mean? I don't think the bench is going to be there. <laughs> I mean, looking at your pictures, full pack of muscles. I mean, yeah, yeah that's, that's your just, strength. That's my strength. That's your strength. My strength is my strength. So yeah, you, that's you, your strength. If you take that away from me, my results are, will suffer. Right. 
but but then even even after all the 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 high level that uh, you were competing for so many years then you've uh, transferred the passion yeah in your let's say background yep. uh, and you are still running and you are still winning you came to Romania and you and you've yeah, been I was, you know on a strike you were winning <laughs> medal after medal yeah, yeah i was very lucky um you know i was a balkan champ uh, in a lot of different events indoors outdoors and of course romanian champ in a lot of in events indoors and outdoors And um, for me, I just needed to do that just to, just to assure myself that you still have it. That I still have it. That I'm still healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, there are there are certain limitations post transplant. Um, you know, and there have been a lot of limitations post. Uh, you know, the whole cancer thing. Um, so yeah, I think now I'm a little more of a just a recreational sport person, but. Uh, I'll, I'll do that but 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 you still have it in you i mean it's something that because this is what people need to understand that actually it's like a lifestyle it's like a, it's like a habit let's say yes that you don't do it just because you want to have a medal and to be listed on some website right oh yeah no you just you're just you're you, just enjoying you, it you, sometimes well, you need, you need to, uh, it's like i want to measure myself so yeah absolutely how, how am i doing yeah how am i doing oh, okay i'm doing pretty good okay i'm happy with that you know it's just uh yeah you know it's just it's just my measure Uh, it's my own. Per it's my personal thing. It's my personal thing. I'm just sort of like, okay, I need to measure myself. Where am I at? Okay, yeah, you know, I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. Okay, good. You know, and if I'm, you know, I'm not a fat pig, then, uh, <laughs> then, then I'm like, oh boy, no wonder I came last. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder why. You know, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. I'm yeah, 140 kilos, and uh, you know, but uh, yeah, no, it's just a, just just the, for me, it's just a measure. And you, know, you want to stay healthy, stay in shape. You don't get to be my age. You want to. Absolutely, and I and I think this is one message that maybe not everyone will start sports, you know, at young age, whatever. Right. But it's never too late, right? Oh, never. You can yeah. start at thirty, forty, whatever. You just absolutely be fit, fifty, whatever. Just you can start anytime. You know, yeah. it's just a matter of it's, a, it's such a healthy thing to do. I mean, people start, to, you know. 50s the new 30 and yeah yeah 60s the new 20 yeah uh, you know. <laughs> but what, i mean be healthy is you know be healthy go for a walk go to the park you know just just be healthy you know keep if you if you're healthy you're at a healthy weight you know heart disease is the number one killer you know so and that's because people are overweight and they become unhealthy and diabetes sets in and disease sets in and just but uh, because talking about overweight and uh, diabetes because you can very easily compare the both worlds let's say the eastern european and uh, us uh, worlds yeah yeah I, i think that in romania not so many uh, obese people that you can see on the streets true at, at 100% but that being said 60% of the population has heart disease Okay, so then it's not obese, but it's obesity, but it's something else. Yeah, it's probably. Well, I think it's. I don't know. Yeah, um, you have to go with. Is it? Is it the heavy diet? Is it the you know, health and wellness? Is it the lack of exercise? Or who knows? But, yeah. Uh, What's the cause of it's that? A, it's a. There's a combination of things. Yeah. Clearly, in America, it's obesity. Yeah, but yeah. it's from the industry, from the food, and from the fast foods and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, without question. Yeah, but whenever I go to states, yeah, everything is so good. <laughs> uh, I know, isn't it? It's just like yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, mm. I gotta behave, you know, because else, you know, <laughs> donut looks good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything is so tasty. Like oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I feel the pain. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, because uh, uh, talking about uh, talking about uh, David Popovic and yeah. uh, also about uh, uh, yeah other athletes, uh, I have a very good friend that uh, he lives in San Francisco, uh, Romanian, working there, and in, he has this um, um, club that uh, he wants to let's say promote um, working, as you said, yeah, working and studying or studying and. Um, Sorry, not uh, working, studying, studying and uh, training. Yep. Yes, yeah, to be an athlete, and uh, he he facilitates uh, the the process, yeah, to for uh, Romanians to go there and study at the various in universities in um, oh, wow. US. Um, but uh, like you said, because we are not on tape, and that's why I'm asking again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what what would you think the exposure would be for David Popovich, for example? It would be insane. Insane. It would be insane. I mean, he'd show, he'd, he's the world record holder. He'd show up at any university, and they'd just be like... Oh, they would so welcome him, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. They he, would take him. They would take him. Any, yeah. any, he, he's, he's got a full ride scholarship anywhere he wants to go. Like, fucking name, name any institution. They name. would say, yeah. They'll uh. say, they'll, they couldn't enroll him fast enough. 
Yeah, and right. then and then contracts and sponsorship wise and so on, then yeah, you would so, have and, good opportunities, and, right? Yeah, and then uh, now there's a different. Uh, so there's a different. Uh, I have to find out what they are, um, but uh, there's a whole different. Uh, before, when you were an NCAA athlete, you couldn't have any sponsors and any kind of stuff, you know. But now, the fucking this big melee happened, and now you like guys can get contracts. Like they're playing football and they're making five. You know, they've been their rights have been purchased by somebody for millions, and oh, it's crazy. It's it's insane now. Now that you're a university athlete, you can have anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if yeah. he was a university athlete, he'd have he'd he'd have he'd be a millionaire. He'd be a millionaire. He'd be a millionaire. Yeah, in, like, so, in 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 a month, like he'd yeah, have, just like that, just yeah, like that, just like that, he'd be a millionaire. He'd be he'd be representing a like. Can you imagine if he was like at SC, for example? He'd have to go to I think California would be like because swimming, you know, it's all, yeah. all year round yeah. outdoors, right? Yeah. And uh, he'd have to go. He'd have to go there. I could facilitate that. I know everybody at USC. Okay, um, so David, if you David, if you need the uh, if you need some help, uh, how are this here? Right. Oh man, I could facilitate him going to that university, and he would just be. He'd be out. He'd, he'd, yeah, what we would change his life. Yeah, but you see, this is one question because it's about the system, for example. So Romania, it's yeah, only one country, but there are many other countries on this uh, planet yep. that they have produced uh, wonderful results. I mean, yeah, the, the people, humans have produced. Uh, and then America has bought the results and the people, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, they have imported the, the, the humans, if you want yes. to say it like that. Yeah, absolutely. So what is your take on that model and uh, on, on that system? How a country like Romania and other countries can fight with the acquisition of U.S.? You know, when you talk about the, the, the brain and also the athletes. Well, it's just, again, it's the Romanian system. You know, they have to, uh, they have to invest in sport like, like other countries have invested in sport. Like, like let me look at the other European countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, I mean, look at Germany. They invest in sport. Sweden. You know, yeah, the Scandinavian countries, they invest a lot, a lot. in sport yeah. because they understand its, its importance uh, health-wise, mental health-wise, for the youth, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you know, I, I don't, is there, are there any use? Are there any kindergarten, grade one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Romanian kids running around saying, um, I, I want to be like, well, like who? Yeah, like who? Right, who do you want to be? Who's the like? role model? Who's your yeah. role model? Like, okay, yeah. okay, so we've got, thank God we got Popovich. So maybe the kids now who are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sw are swimming want to be like, I'm yeah. going to be like Popovich because they're like, he did it, I can do it. He's Romanian, I'm Romanian, I, I can, can do, do it. it. Right? So that's great. I mean, that's awesome. What an example. Um, so why don't, why don't they put money into, uh, you know, other sports so kids have something to look up to? You want to get them off their iPhones? You want to get them off Instagram? You want to get them off Facebook? Then give them, give them something to do, you know? Like, uh, you know, Put money into athletics, put money into volleyball, handball, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But again, this is something related also to culture and to the education of the society, let's say, yeah? Yeah. Well, I mean, they've always been, but Eastern European countries have always been great in sport. You know, I mean, when Ceausescu was here, sport was, you know, sport was uh, well-funded. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, it, it was what it was. But I mean, they can still, they can go back to funding sport. I mean, the only reason they don't fund sport is because uh, of the uh, the political corruption in terms of, you know, politicians wanting to make themselves wealthy. So, you know, I mean, Romania is absolutely positively notorious for our political corruption in, in Europe, if not the world. Um, it is what it is. It's not, you know, that's the elephant in the room. And, you know, every time, every time there's a, there's an EU conference and there's a meeting and the EU has to, has to, dole out money to the different countries for different things. I'm sure there's somebody sitting at the table sort of going, okay, in Romania we'll get, um, and they're probably just going. Okay. <laughs> no, because no, they know, no. Because they know Romania is going to get that money. It's just going to go to the politicians. They're going to put Absolutely. it in their pockets and, uh, you know, that's, the, how yeah. it, that's how it goes. Romania received $79 billion, 79, 79. 79 billion dollar COVID relief package from the EU. What happened to those money? Exactly. What happened? That's, what happened? that's what a huge that? amount. Well, what, that's what, what happened to that money? What happened? You know, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of, there's just all kinds of stuff. And everybody, everybody knows. And everybody, that's why, you know, politics are the way politics are. Nobody wants to vote because they're all thinking, well, everybody's corrupt. Why should I vote for that person? They're just going to steal money because the person before them still stole money and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I say, you know what? If, if I were able to vote, I would say, listen, whoever's in office, vote for somebody else. And they're like, yeah, well, that, that person's corrupt. 
no problem. If you don't like if you don't like person A, vote for person B. You don't like first person B, vote for person C. Just put a revolving door on it until you can get somebody in there who actually cares about Romanians and yeah. cares about the system and cares about the people in the country, countryside, and wants to help develop the country. I mean, it shouldn't take, you know, six hours to drive to Cluj. It shouldn't take that's eight, insane, isn't it? It shouldn't take eight hours to drive to Suchava. You know, that's that's the government's fault. That's one hundred percent government fault, right? Um, but you know, it is what it is. I yeah, mean, the political corruption is what it is, um, and they they want to blame it on somebody before them or back in the eighties or in the nineties. Such and such did this and did that, and I'm like, okay, so what? We're okay. talking about we're talking about today, and we're talking about now. Let, why don't we? Why don't somebody step up? Yeah, do the let's right see. Thi- let's do the right thing now and start making corrections. Mm-hmm. The smallest mm-hmm. correction, you know, so that people of Romania can benefit from the beautiful country that they have. Absolutely, absolutely. You've seen some places in Romania, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you like the Romanian mountains? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Romania has everything. It has to be one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It has everything. Forests, hills, lakes, mountains. Um, you know, yeah. if, if I were the president of Romania... If I were president, I'd, I'd build a wall all the way around Romania, and I'd tell everybody else to get lost. <laughs> Romania has everything. They ha- they, they're completely self-sufficient, but unfortunately, life doesn't work like that. You know, the, the politicians sold off all the natural resources yeah, yeah. and everything. So. But do you know that uh, during uh, Ceausescu's period, uh, Romania got rid of all the debts? Oh, they got all the debt, yeah. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of, there's a lot of power in debt. Yeah. So when, when Romania got rid of the debt... That, and now uh, it's in big shit again. <laughs> right. You know, when they got rid of the debt, then, uh, then they were free from the powers to be, you know, and independent. And yeah. It's just, yeah. A, you know, the political economic uh, world that we live in, that was probably not a good thing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a great thing for the country, but a bad thing for uh, uh, for for international policy because now they don't owe you don't owe anybody. They don't have anything over on you. You can be independent, make your own decisions, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So it's better if you owe. Yeah, so, it's better, huh? <laughs> right? So yeah, you owe. So it's you owe. Yeah. Uh, you can do this for me. Okay, right? come on. But actually, like that, you are just uh, every day you are selling a little piece from from yeah. here, a little piece from here, yeah. and then you are sold. There you go completely. But Romania has everything. Great, <clears throat> great, great, beautiful country. People are awesome and uh, smart. And uh, you know, it's just like gotta love Romania, love the people. Gotta hate the system. <laughs> system is just you know i mean it's the, it is what it is i mean it's just it's you know it's that's life the system's corrupt yeah yeah and, absolutely and uh you know it's, it's unfortunate uh, but how are coming back to sports again because yep. uh, we've uh, we've talked that much about the the, the high performance athletes they say yeah but let's talk about also yeah, people that uh, just want to get into sports they want to do a marathon or whatever just to be active right what's your take on that and what would you advise them <clears throat> for those that they were not you know they don't have a background in sports or they just want to get yeah. started well uh, again you can uh, at first it's nice just to go for a run go to the gym once or twice Mm-hmm. discover what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. And then, like anything, just get a plan. You know, life, if you have a plan, you can move forward. If you don't have a plan, you, can, you can't move. You move laterally or you move backwards. You need to move forward and have a plan. If you have a plan, you have a goal. So my goal would be and my plan is to get out and go for a walk three times a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to go do that. You know, that's a plan. That's a plan. Right, That's and you follow plan. that plan, and next thing you know, in a month, you sort of like, wow, I've lost like eight kilos, and uh, wow, I'm starting to feel better. You mm-hmm. know, if you're just mm-hmm. going for a walk, so you just need a plan. And if you want to, you know, get involved in in a sport or something like that, again, you just need a plan. You you need someone that you could talk to, maybe about, do you want to join a club? Do you want to, you know, get together with some friends? Um, yeah, but what about coach? Well, yeah, what about a coach? Of course, yeah. I mean, then, then that's now if you want to take it to another level, you know, instead of just your general fitness, and then you want to find a coach, then yeah, then you go, you find a coach, and then you just you just keep the you just keep going up the ladder, whatever. It's keep like building, problem, yeah. Problem solution, you know? <clears throat> and it's not really a problem, but if you have a plan, you have steps to your plan, and the most important thing is to have a plan so that you can move over or forward. Without a plan, it's difficult to move forward. You Absolutely, can, you can move laterally and you can move backwards, but you can't move forward. 
And uh, in addition to that, because you've always been into sports, I mean, your entire life, somebody that will start at whatever, in 20s or whatever, 30s or late 30s, you know, because they're always asking, like, how fast can I progress? How fast can I run that time or whatever, you know? It's what you've been preaching for the last one hour and a half about patience, right? <laughs> Isn't it? You can't do it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or Every, if you could that would be great right but <laughs> everybody uh, i'd like to do a triathlon and come top 10 uh, yeah and it's uh next thursday yeah yeah <laughs> never <laughs> like, uh, well unless unless you're gonna unless you have a jet ski motorbike and uh <laughs> and i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> um yeah it's just uh yeah it, it's it, you gotta be patient patient nothing happens overnight you know you have to build you have to earn it you have to, you know what I mean? You, you've got to put in the time. They say, you know, they say 10,000 hours. What's about with all these 10,000 hours? What's, you want, like, what's the idea you know, with like, that? The, the idea is to be become a master or to become, you know, relatively superlative in a, a particular area of sport. Yeah. You need to put in 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. Yeah. 10,000 hours. I don't know how many, how many, that's what I, but you know what? 10,000 hours is like five years. If you, you go on 24 hour days or something like that. If you work that hard right. or maybe 10 years, if you work right. like less. And that's a lot. And uh, that's, that's a lot. And that's to be at the top, top of the game, whatever game that is you're playing. Now, if you just, uh, still, if you're just a fitness enthusiast, then, you know, again, you just need to be consistent. I can't, I can't stress more than, uh, having a plan. You know, you can have a stupid plan. You can have a horrible plan, but it's better than no plan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Howard, what's your take? Because everybody is asking now about uh, supplements, roids, and uh, all kind of powders, baby. I just uh, want to get like Mr. Yeah. Olympia tomorrow. Right. I always tell like you can have the perfusion in your veins, in yeah. your veins, and you can start running. You know, yeah. and you'll never improve or you'll never catch you me can, because yeah. you still need the years, right? Right. It says you can't. It's not. I mean, uh, until they come up with like uh, I don't know a Hulk injection. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, you, so just, you're gonna have to put in some work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, nutritionally. So you have to feed your body nutritionally first and foremost. Yeah. So why don't we start? Why don't we start? I would start with there. Okay. So without without destroying your diet the way it is right now, let's just take it step by step. So let's make sure that I know you're eating what you're eating. Some of it's not great. Some of it's crummy. Some of it's good. Yeah. So let's just feed your body nutritionally. What does that mean? So let's, uh, are we taking a multivitamin? Are we getting enough protein? Something standard, something basic. Because once you do that, then the craving for all b things bad slowly starts to dissipate just from feeding your body nutritionally. Mm -hmm. All right. And then from there, you can, you can, start, to, you can start to adjust and slim your, your meal plan to something more satisfactory and healthy. But if you don't feed your, you know, you just can't go, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go cold turkey and I'm never going to have this or never going to have that. And I'm like, okay, well, that's nice, but your body's going to go into shock and it's going to want, you know, especially sugar, et cetera, yeah, sugar, yeah. salt. Um, so you need to feed your body nutritionally. And that's a simple thing, multivitamin, you know, and make sure you multivitamin some protein. You know, we, what do we lack in? A lot of people lack in vitamin D and magnesium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's a couple on, so maybe a little supplement there. And, and, you know, let's just, just, let's just work with that for a month first. Stick to the basics first. Stick to the basics first. Do not ask for all kind of supplements uh, and steroids and so on, right? right. Yeah, and then, and even the, even the people who want, you know, there's those guys that want the steroids. Well, they want steroids to be, you know, they want to go in the gym and... Yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, okay, so, I mean, I just understand what that does for them. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> But hilarious, I think it's other stuff because they ask me because they just want to, to find the shortcut. Whereas, okay, yeah. whereas I think that if you get that stuff, yeah. you should work harder, like even well, you're, harder. Because your, your ability to work harder yeah. is, is increased, Yeah, right? So it's sort of like, uh, okay, so you want to take it and still be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> you want a shortcut, but you want to be lazy too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it doesn't so. work like that. It doesn't work like that. You so you want gigantic muscles off. and yeah. you want three grams of protein a day. I don't think that's going to happen. No, no, you no, know? no. So you've got to have a meal plan. You've got to be you've got to be eating the right things to feed your muscles, right? Absolutely. And, your body. and if you're not doing that on the on the most basic of level, then 
Yeah, I mean, look of the look at the top guys. I mean, Ronnie Coleman, that uh, uh-huh. he has been. Yeah, he's a legend. And but yeah. it, people ask me, yeah, he's sick, he's bad, he's he's stupid. And I think no, listen, you don't, and you will never understand what what the guy has done. He has dedicated not his entire life, his soul to the yeah. sport. Yeah. Unlike other people in the business, he said, I give my all. I gave my all, you yeah. know? And that's why he's paying the price now. Yeah. But just because he was all in all the time, you know? Yeah. He did. I mean, come on, Ronnie. Oh, I mean, you talk to any bodybuilder, any bodybuilder. Yeah. And they just, you, it doesn't matter who it was. They, you say Ronnie Coleman. And, and I was like, like yeah. He, he just, he was just all in. He just lifted more weight. He just... He just yeah, yeah, he stayed yeah. there. When I was I was done my workout, he was still there. Yeah I, yeah. I came for my workout in the morning and he'd already been there an hour. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, how are you going So that's the mentality. No, but I just want to emphasize yeah, that is the mentality, the mentality that you need. Yeah. If you're gonna if you want if you want greatness, that's the mentality. We say first one to practice, last one to leave. Last one to leave. Right? Yeah. Definitely yeah. Michael Jordan was like that. Yeah. yeah that's a Michael yeah. Jordan thing for those people because they know who Michael Jordan is. Any, yeah. Anybody else I bring up there, you know, they're going to know how old I am. Talking about big names, because I've seen recently, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I was sending you some videos about a guy commenting, one of my friends commenting about uh, uh, all kind of athletes, former world record, Bob, Re- Bob Beemans. And, and yeah. you were like, ah, I know that guy. I met him, broke yeah. the world record with Mike Powell and so on. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, I was impressed because you know all the guys and you've been there. But <clears throat> uh, it was very um, uh, intriguing for me because what I wanted to understand, uh, something that you have this innate ability that, that you, you have the relaxation yeah, mm-hmm. during really hard times, let's say. yeah. So this is what you were explaining to me also here in the message, that actually the execution of the, uh, yeah, whatever, of the athlete, it's... Uh, really, uh, um, let's say what we see there, uh, he works so hard, but inside there is such a deep level of relaxation. Correct. That at high level, you just need to have that. Without that, you cannot perform. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's like, um, and unfortunately, you have practice, you have great practice athletes, and then you've got great competition athletes. Okay. That's right. a great separation. And, uh, you know, and we've, at, at high levels of sport, um, for sportsmen at high levels or maybe even lower levels, you know, you've got that kid in practice who's always, you know, running faster than everybody else or scoring more points than everybody else or hitting the tennis forehand better than everybody else. But when it comes to a tournament, they're nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. They're just mm-hmm. like, it's like they'd never played the game before. Um, and that's, that's a process. I mean, that's, that's a, a process. That's a mental but you were explaining me because this is what I want again to emphasize. You were explaining me actually uh, the the that technical execution and uh, relaxation. Let's say they go yep. together. It's like a quandary. They yep. they are so interconnected that you can't separate them. If you look at the, for example, the best swimmers or the best runners, yep. they are in such a nice flow. Yeah, yeah, they're flowing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's just <laughs> like you know, I have it's I like in it's like for all those people who've gotten a massage. Yeah. Right. And then they come across that that one spot. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, I don't joke, yeah, right. And the massage therapist is telling you, relax, relax, relax. And all you're thinking of is, how am I going to relax? Jesus, you're killing me, right? That's it. That's got, the moment. You've got to relax and yeah. let them get in there and work, and it's painful. But if you just relax, accept that. Yeah. If you just relax, the pain will dissipate, and, and the muscle will relax. And so it's something similar in in terms of competition, like uh, mentally prepared. You, mm-hmm. know, you can't. You you know you're you're at your best when you're you know the, let me look at Popovich he doesn't you know he's not like yeah yeah you know yeah, what I mean yeah, you yeah, never yeah, see yeah, and you yeah. know you see Usain Bolt he's not <clears throat> you know just but but if you look at Usain many times he is smiling at the camera and doing all kind of jokes you how know? relaxed is that guy yeah like yeah <laughs> right and uh, yeah relaxation and it's just uh, it's, it's I think it's something it's, it, they are tied in together hand in hand and glove but uh, it's something that it's it's a process I think you have to learn. Um, because we all get nervous, we all get tight, <clears throat> and you just have to reconcile yourself. Am I prepared? Mm-hmm. I, I prepared mm-hmm. well for this. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you're not just just go out and compete, and, and it's it's hard. It's really hard. It is, you know, it is it is devastatingly hard. But it's something that has to be done. So you have to find a way to it. Yeah, and that's, um, to get it done. You know, yeah. So that's what I, you know, I'll tell athletes. I've known many athletes, and you know, 
Like, listen, this is practice, okay? This, you're, now, I know it's race time, but it's the same as you in practice. You're not, you know, if you're, if you're a sprinter, you're not racing other people. You're racing the clock. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And uh, that happens like when you've when you got a big handball game. You know, you're, playing in, you're playing another team for the championship, okay? You know? it's, a, it's, a, it's, a lot, it's a lot easier to relax in a team atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? In the individual sports, you know, that's where people start to get tight. Yeah. And that's where, because you feel uh, you're tight, because you feel alone. You know, you're sort of alone. And, you know, that, that, that solitude is actually can be something really good if you can just sort of, you know, get into the inner self and just like, okay, technique, relaxation, let's go. Right? And that's why, you know, team sports, it's a lot easier to get, you know, it's a lot easier to be relaxed with your friends, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Your friends by your side and sort of like, you know, you know. So you've already given us a, a great method for how to become a champion because I think that is one very important aspect, yeah? The ability to relax, obviously to connect your breathing pattern mm -hmm. and then to relax and then to be able to create the visualization that you want, yeah? Because I think that you've done that so many times and uh, at the level that you have it on automatic pilot, I think. Yeah. All these go together just like that. Especially, right? especially breathing. Especially breathing, right. just you I feel see, it. Yeah, when I you're see so many people in uh, in these individual sports or even in the weight room, you know, holding their breath. Yeah. Anytime you exert a force, you should be exhaling. You exert a force, you should exhale. You can exhale. You can exhale in increments, but just as long as you exhale, you can't. You can't exert a force holding your breath because it locks your whole body up. And I see people. A lot of people make that mistake when they want that one more rep. Yeah, they're like. Mm. It's like okay, well, and again, because if you have if you have a good breathing pattern, then you have a good relaxation pattern. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm breathing correctly, I'm relaxing correctly. Yeah. And I'm exerting a force and relaxing. So, yeah, you know. But I think it's also the, the energy flow because yeah, from oh, absolutely because you have to move a force. Yeah. Right. So again, and it, it, it's just I think it's just the the mental concept, and that's why that's why you have to have a coach who can talk to an athlete and try to demonstrate because the the mental concept of well how do i exert a force and relax that seems to be contradictory i'm relaxing but i'm exerting a powerful yeah. force yeah. you know how do i do that and that that's a conversation you have to have that's something you need to show them that's that's something okay well here's how we do it we breathe all right mm -hmm. you're exerting mm -hmm. a force let it out mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it, during the course of letting that out and learning how to breathe correctly you actually are becoming more relaxed you know mm -hmm. but again you know, that, yeah, that yeah. conversation's hardly ever had. So, <laughs> so Howard, we've talked about uh, nutrition and the pills and, uh, um, yeah, uh, let's say uh, keep it to the basic or stick to the basics. That's stick to it. the basics, yeah. yeah. Feed your body nutritionally um, and, and, and work from there as you get better, as you get more. I mean, literally, you could compete at the national level in any sport with, with the basics. With the basics. With the basics, yeah. Yeah, you want to, yeah. I mean, it, the the... The extras might help you, you know, yeah. single digit percentage. Yeah. But now you're talking about being you're talking about being in the top ten in the world. You're talking about being the best of the best of the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then so, it's a different story. So yeah. it's a different story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So moving from this chapter to let's say recovery process, because nowadays you see all kind of technology and all kind of uh, methods out there on the market. But what's your take? I mean, everybody that they have money, that they don't have money, that they have access, they don't have access. What do you think is like the ABC of recovery in terms of uh, well, yeah, an athlete? My my entire ABC, you should you know my entire ABC of recovery is, um, and that is uh, um, blood flow. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, that's what recovery is all about, blood flow. Whether it's uh, cryogenic, whether it's bare, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the hyperbaric, Hyper hyperbaric, hyperbaric chamber, hy hyperbaric chamber. Um, all of it has to do with blood flow. Um, and you can, you know, hyperbaric is oxygen, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what oxygen saturation level you're at or where it's going if you don't have any blood flow because your oxygen is carried by the blood. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously for me uh, but I know that you have another secret tool because not everybody has a hyperbaric chamber at home correct yeah but you yeah. have a secret tool that I've tried it uh, several times and I was yeah. always happy to, to be on it but uh, yes please. so yeah so it's uh, called EECP external enhanced counter pulsation um, okay it's a cardiovascular tool and it is the cure um, and I'll say that again it is the cure for a lot of I'll say 90% of heart disease. 
Um, but what it is is a circulation therapy. So if you if you were to Google good circulation, mm -hmm. what does good circulation do for me? You know, you're going to get a list of everything from being disease free to being you know Superman, and that's basically what it is. It doesn't matter what you eat, drink, what drug you take, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you don't have a delivery system, you're screwed. Um, and your delivery system, of course, is your circ circulatory system. Yeah. And ECP is massive circulation. So you get you get the circulation in an hour ECP session. You get the circulation of running a marathon with your heart at rest. So it's 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 pretty impressive. It's pretty unbelievable. And it's uh, you know, it's 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 in the finest hospitals in the world, or it's uh, in Romania, if you know me. But but uh, just to make it uh, clear, for yep. um, so first of all, this comes from the let's say from the medical. It's a from medical yeah, background. Yeah, it came from, from yeah, It was invented at Harvard. Yeah, and it was perfected by the Chinese. Okay, and uh, you can find it in some of the finest hospitals in the world if you ask for it. So actually, this is one application in sports, let's say, yes. to enhance the recovery, but it comes from from hospitals. Well, correct. Yeah. 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 Not only does it enhance recovery, but um, yeah, I mean, just in, just in general, in terms of a health and wellness thing, it's the more you can do it, then the healthier you'll be. The better, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the better, be. yeah. yeah. Well, I've seen it for myself and also the people that uh, I've seen at your place. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, the old grandpa that uh, was uh, barely walking. Yeah. And then by, by having him on the machine, I mean, yeah, I man. Know. It was a miracle. I mean, that guy was yeah. told he was, given, uh, he was given like 30 days to live. He'd had every possible, uh, you know, cardiovascular surgery. They couldn't do any more operations on him because he was too weak. And uh, he lived another three years. Um, and COVID actually got him, unfortunately. But um, I've had all kinds of. I had a girl. I've had a, um, a girl who had a stroke, yeah. and uh, was told she never do sports again. Came back to be the top. Of, you know, came back seven months later to be atop the sports world again. Um, uh, circulation is is amazing. Now, when you have, like I say, when you have ECP therapy, it's uh, it is. 100% secret weapon for athletes for sure. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I can uh, uh, I can subscribe to that because uh, I've been there and uh, you remember we've tested with the ring. Oh, with, with the ring the and the wand. Yeah, 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 that's right. And that yeah. was like, whoa, this is, now I understand what, what do you mean that you actually just sitting on the machine, you know, yeah. and, and the blood flow is that, uh, you know, high, you know, yeah. that, uh, and, the, and the heart is resting. resting. The yeah. heart is resting, you know. know. That's, That's unbelievable. I, yeah. I mean, I had whatever, 55 or whatever, but yeah. then it was 120, 130. 30, yeah. yeah. The blood flow. flow. I was like, it, I'm out there doing an it's, aerobic run, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm, but I'm actually sitting. Yeah, you're resting, and the heart's I'm at resting, rest, and the yeah. body's at rest. I'm resting. So you're 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 clearing out all the you're clearing out all the lactic acid. You're clearing out all the the bad crap in the system, and uh, it's, you're getting a detox at the same time. It's uh, it's it's just it's just overwhelmingly impressive. I could not believe they didn't have it in Romania. That's why I brought it here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you actually, for those that uh, for those that do not know, you have two machines like that, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the session is for one hour, or you session can is one hour. One yeah. hour. And yeah. uh, the more so when I treat people who have actual actual heart disease, there's a protocol uh, for the number of sessions that they need. Okay. And uh, for athletes, it is, it's 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 you know you can do it whenever you want. You can do it post workout, pre workout. Uh, post competition, pre competition, it um, will help you. It, yeah. it will, it will unequivocally help. But, uh, uh, but uh, Howard, uh, one question because uh, this is now again something that makes like uh, you know. So you say that it will help and also solve the yeah heart issues and so on. Yeah, but then why are out there still all kind of surgeries and implants and <sighs> I don't know. Medicine is for money. Okay, they want your money. Medicines for money. Um, as soon as this, I mean, ECP, for example, was invented right at the same time, if not before open heart surgery. Okay. Right now, um, ECP <coughs> is available in Europe in only two countries here with me in Romania and uh, in the UK. And but why so like that, Howard? Well, because it's, again, it's, you know, anytime you, uh, anytime you come up with, it's a, the comparison would be um, holistic medicine <sighs> to general medicine, yeah, right? We know that there are plants and herbs and et cetera, et cetera, that cure certain ailments. And that's actually where the medications come from. But we're going we're gonna to derive the, we're going to derive from those plants and herbs, et cetera, the main components and make a drug. And we're going to sell you the drug. Uh, we don't, you don't need to know about the, actually where that came from. And it, it's, it's, it's hard, but uh, luckily for ECP, it's, uh, um, 
It's over three or 400 peer-reviewed studies from the finest cardiology institutions on the planet. So it's like, you know, I, don't ever have to, I don't ever have to defend it I, as long as the, you know, I just tell a doctor, if you don't know about it, you need to read. Um, mm -hmm. because, uh, just, because just study and see. Peer, 400 peer-reviewed studies can't be wrong. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> right? And not only that, but you see the results. Oh, well, exactly, just, yeah. just give it a try, you yeah. know. Uh, only yeah. one session will be enough yeah. to, to uh, figure it everybody out. Everybody, after one session, you know. Yeah, at least one session. Oh, so that's very, wow, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. And again, it's it's great for, it's just great for the Chinese user for so many, so many, um, so many different ailments. But uh, yeah, for, for training, for post-recovery, um, preparation, health and wellness, uh, it's phenomenal. And of course, if you're suffering from any kind of peripheral vascular disease, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, um, vein thrombosis, so the list goes on and on. This is this is how you get better. Yeah, without so question. It's all about circulation. That's Correct. the idea. It's all about circulation. All about circulation. Yeah. Yeah. Circulation yeah. therapy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, how are the? We've talked so many things, and uh, also about uh, you mentioned before you know, diseases and so on. And uh, maybe some people do not know. Many people know, but maybe some do not know that. Actually, uh, against all odds, let's say, you've been in one of the biggest fights of your life. Yeah. Back in 2006? Uh, yeah, 2000, yeah. Uh, started in 2006. 2005, 2006, yeah. yeah. And, um, that you got the phone call. You were actually working and you got the phone call yeah. and uh, they, like... They, they get the phone call and uh, it's basically the doctor on the phone, which was a surprise because the doctor never calls you. Yeah. And, um, you know, I talked to him for 20 minutes and the first thing he said was, Hi, Howard, this is Dr. So-and-so. Do you have a minute? Yeah. And I'm oh. like, okay, that can't be good. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a minute. What's going on? You know? And, uh, you know, we talked uh, again for a little bit, and I don't remember much of the conversation, but the one thing I do remember is him asking me if I had my affairs in order. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like, do I have, have I made the, the, the testament and the, yeah, yeah. the preparation like, for death. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I can go pick up that truck over there. What's, what's, what's wrong? Yeah. So, you know, a long story short, I mean, I had a very rare liver disease and um, unfortunately had advanced very to the end stage. And they said, well, you probably have three months, maybe six months to live. And I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, who did you want on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, who, 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 hello, hello? Was it me? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so then I just took on a whole different, you know, life went in a whole different direction and um you know, some major changes occurred and I managed to, uh, instead of dying three to six months, I managed to stay alive for almost three years, but then I did come to an end and I was just, I was lucky. I was just blessed. I, w I received a liver transplant in 2009 mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And then life continued again and then everything was great. And then three years ago, so what's that? So 2009, uh, 2019, so 10 years after that, um, you know, I, Something similar. I said this time it's colon cancer, and I'm like, oh, jeez, really? But this time I was sort of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, I've been there, yeah, already, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been there already. You know, I'm not going anywhere. So uh, unfortunately, they had to remove my entire my entire colon just to make sure that uh, the cancer didn't spread. So I'm, I'm like, good, I was like, okay, well, you know, that makes life sort of uncomfortable in different ways. But uh, you know what, being uh, being alive is better than uh, not alive. being alive. Yeah, you know? yeah I mean, absolutely. It, uh, it, was, it, it was tough. It's always been tough uh, financially. Um, you know, I had to start over twice uh, because it cost everything. And you had to sell everything. Had and to sold everything I had, traveled the world trying to stay alive. No cure, no treatment. You got it. You're going to die. Or you have to have a transplant. Or you know, with the cancer was some, something, something similar. So I thought, well, I'm just going to stay alive. And Howard, at that moment, because I can assume that uh, that you had the same attitude, right, problem and solution, and you, I think, I suppose that you're open to anything, voodoo and all the stuff oh, you that, are yeah, telling that's, me. Yeah, that's the one, yeah, that's the, I, I said that one time, I said, hey, listen, if they were doing voodoo somewhere, I showed up, I was just like, yeah, here, stick the pin in my doll, okay, right there, Come on, by the liver, go ahead, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I mean, at that point in time, you know, it's, um, there's nothing, you know, they say, um, I, was, I always like this quote. I can't remember where this quote came from, but they say the most dangerous person in the world is somebody who is reconciled. Um, <laughs> but it's not like it's not it's not danger as in like a danger to others. But uh, when you're reconciled, you are completely okay, 100% okay, and responsible for um, your actions, the results. So when you do something, you know 100% that whatever the results of this action are, I'm okay with it. I'm ready to accept that. I'll own that. And um, yeah, that's what you learn to become reconciled. Um, so 
I don't sweat. Or they say sweat the small stuff. I'm just like, I don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, you know, whether it's something derogatory or something uh, difficult, it's sort of like it is what it is. Um, I, I have to do my very best, and let's 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 see what happens. Let's see what let's see what the outcome is going to be, and and, I, and I'm okay with that, and and that works well for me. So you always found uh, solutions and ways to just keep going and uh, yep. and uh, to reinvent yourself, let's say, because you had to reinvent yourself. But uh, what do you think? Because Maybe this question is a little bit stupid, but anyway, the price that you had to pay, and I'm talk not talking about the money now, right? Because you had the transplant, yeah, correct. But uh, okay, so you solved this problem, yeah, the liver, let's say, aspect. But yep. I think that in your body, yeah, you had to pay a different price or something else because uh, with a new liver, uh, you <laughs> have new problems, let's say. Oh, yeah, so how the question is like that, yeah, how does uh, your life or how did your life change? With this transplant, it's a, it's um, yeah. You have to overcome a lot of different issues. Um, one being, you know, your prox. Ninety percent of transplant patients live within two hundred kilometers of where they had the transplant. It's like an umbilical cord. You're too. You're afraid to get too far away from the hospital because in case of something, in you case just, something yeah. happens, you want to you want to yeah. get back there, and you never know if something's going to happen. Now, meanwhile, on top of that, you've got uh, medications that uh, are immunosuppressive, and Yeah, that's 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 those are tough. Um, the immunosuppressive. So now basically you don't have an immune system. So you know you can you are so open to getting cancer or this or that or just yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. times more than the average person. So that that sort of sucks. So you just have to uh, and you got to watch what you eat. There's certain things you can't eat because they interact with your medication. And the list of side effects go from depression to like severe depression um, because this is what these drugs cause. You've got depression. And uh, I, I remember there's a, you know, a presentation I've got like there's like 160 different side effects. I didn't even look at them all. I just, I just wrote them. On, I just had somebody write them on pages so I could put them in my presentation. But uh, there's a lot. And for me, the only side effect really that has taken effect, there's two. One is uh, you know, sort of. I would, you know, I hate to say depression. I, yeah. I have those moments where, you know, I just sort of got to sit back and I, and I get a little sad. And then I sort of get over it and I'm, I'm back, back to myself again. But uh, the other one is uh, one of my drugs is uh, neurotoxic. Mm -hmm. So that sucks because um, in 2018, I had like eight grand mal seizures. And so that means, that means a grand mal seizure is like the worst seizure you can have. So it's like you don't know you're having it. It just strikes at any time and you wake up somewhere else. So a couple of times I was, I was checking in one, I was checking in at the airport in, in uh, Taiwan and I woke up in a hospital. I woke up in an ambulance going somewhere. I was like, what the, oh, well, what's where happening? am I? Yeah. You know, another one I was, actually I was doing a, a sport business conference in front of a thousand people. I remember sort of going, yes, ladies and gentlemen. And, eh, and, and then I woke up in and an, then, I woke up in an ambulance going to the hospital. Um, so that happened a lot of times. And, um, uh, I, I couldn't figure out why. We come to realize that this particular drug is neurotoxic. So now they got to give me another drug to you know, yeah. counteract the side effects ah. of that. And so that other drug, you have to be careful with the other drug because it is addictive. <coughs> and so what happens is if you don't have access to that drug and you can't, you know, you miss a day or two, then you can have your seizure can be like 10 times worse than it ever Even was. Even worse, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So you have to. So you you have to learn to manage medication. You have to learn to. Uh, you have to. You have to manage things differently because the the stakes are really high. Like there's no room. There's no room for. And that's where I sort of like the so that military disciplinarian upbringing because there there are no mistakes. The, you make a mistake and that could be your last. So and that's have, it. And yeah. that's it. So and that's uh, it. But what is uh, what do you think? Is there any kind of logical explanation for what has happened? I mean. Can you track down the root cause or it's no no not well, well for the for the liver disease yeah it's one in a million close your eyes he's got it you know um, you were the lucky one I was I was yeah one of the unlucky ones and and then uh, one of the one of the root causes though was was a uh, colon colon issue yeah. for the liver and then subsequently I wasn't really surprised that it had to come out um, like, I wasn't looking forward to you know because cancer. somehow you were expecting right yeah I was I because had the, I always had a feeling be like eh, you know maybe one day oh, I guess it's today yeah. you know? so uh, but I did I didn't really expect it to uh, it was it, it's a little frightening you know when you have cancer they say okay in the colon we can remove that section and that section of your colon and everything's fine we'll, we'll go back but we don't know if it's spread so we can remove it. You know, you still have 80% of your colon, but we just don't know if we got it all. Uh, okay, well, let me get a second opinion. Then I go back and get a second opinion. And now it's there. It's at A, it's at B. 
but also now we just found it at C and D. And you're like, so, okay, that's not good. Right. Yeah. And that was a month ago. So you're thinking it's, if it goes, if it was anywhere else, your life is over. Yeah. So I was just sort of like, okay, you know what? Let's just take, take the whole thing. Take it out. Yeah. Take it out and we'll do what we have to do. And uh, we'll, we'll do constant checks to make sure it didn't spread anywhere. And that's what I did. And so it didn't spread anywhere. And three years now, three years. Yeah. Yeah. So just keep moving. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember that. Got, got, got a plan. Got to keep yeah. moving forward, you know. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> you are funny. I didn't want to interrupt you. So you said that you have to be always 200 miles away, right? 200 kilometers. 200 yeah. kilometers. But you are like 8,000 miles away or yeah. more. <laughs> uh, yeah, according, so, to aerop- according to my mileage, my airline mileage, yeah. I'm uh, 10,444 kilometers. Kilometers. Uh, so <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you are so bold. <laughs> yeah, <Right>? that, <laughs> that's okay. I don't, yeah, hey, it's just, uh, well, you know, life is what it is. You just, uh, you, you can't stop living. You, know, <laughs> you can't you can't just sort of go huh eh, okay i'm gonna live beside the hospital for the next 20 years you know nah i don't think so <laughs> yeah, not gonna work not gonna work for me i got things to do i've always uh, exactly i've always uh, just looking at you and uh remembering because um, i've mentioned you said yeah with les brown i've always uh yeah lived with his uh, let's say videos right yeah uh, because um in one of his preaches and i was saying like howard you're exactly like that you know he said he's not over until, until I win. Until, until yeah. I win, yeah. Until I win, yeah. Exactly. So uh, always when I look at you, it's like, that's the attitude, you know? It's, it's my way, you know? Got to be resilient. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you got to, well, you know, that's why you remember the, my Instagram thing. Remember I was, I was telling you about that. So Yeah, so I, tell me a little bit about I the, got the, the Instagram the page. concept. Yeah. yeah, Instagram page is uh, HD Resilience Project. And uh, it's just, uh, I, I, w- I wanted to set up a place where I could interact with people, get some engagement. And, um, you know, Talk about being resilient and sharing my story and listening to other people's stories because being resilient is more about, um, you know, getting up off the ground once mm-hmm. you've been knocked down, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like that Stallone in Creed, you know, he's talking about life will beat you to the ground and, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, but it's yeah, not, yeah, you yeah. got to get back up again and, uh, and you do. You do, and how do you do it? Now, being resilient is a, is a skill. It's, it's something that you learn. You learn through your life experiences. You learn through success and you learn through failure. And you just have to apply that. And of course, it, it's it's good to have good people around you. You know, that you have to learn to surround yourself with good people and not be afraid to communicate. You know, especially in this in this era now, we coming out of COVID with all the mental health issues. You know, people. Uh, you know, recently, um, uh, the DJ uh, Ellen DeGeneres had her DJ. You guys, forty years old, had everything in the world, beautiful wife, two kids. You know, Mr. Smile, and you know, just just a, a incredible, amazing man. And uh, just walked out the door one day, went to a hotel, and took his life. And you and you and you and just and you and you just you, you're like you are baffled, like uh, you're baffled. How, yeah, how, like how, how is had, that possible? You know, right, a guy he, that has everything, right? Right. Yeah. And so, but, but you never know. So you never know when people are really. <clears throat> really upset you know and, and it's important to be able to talk to people have someone to talk to um absolutely right and, absolutely. and that's that's part of uh and that's, that's part of the concept that's right that's part of the concept of being you yeah. know being resilient you know listen uh, you know you're not alone you know they say the three hardest things for people to say are i'm sorry mm-hmm. i was wrong mm-hmm. and i need your help <sighs> right those are the three that's hardest great. things for people to say and when you think about it yeah it can be you know i mean when i when i think about my environment it's it's it's, it's difficult for, for, for people to do that. And I think being resilient, learning to be resilient, you can learn to say those things, you know, and, and there are hard things to say. You know, people don't like asking for help. People don't like to admit they're wrong. You know, yeah, and, and yeah. people don't like really saying they're sorry. But you need some sort of humility. You need to be humble in this process. Because else, how can you do it, you know? Well, humble and thankful, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, life is what it is. Um, it could always be worse. You know, sometimes... Uh, and when I hear people complain, I'm thinking, okay, so what? They didn't chill your rosé at the country club? What's wrong? You know, why are you, why are you complaining? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. there's some 12 year old in the hospital right now dying of cancer, and you're complaining about they didn't have, you know, they didn't have your favorite food on the menu. Come yeah. on, come on, now let's put it in perspective. That's, that's crap, man. Right? Yeah. So, uh, that's crap. so that's why I did it. So, uh, HD Resilience Project. Yeah. On, on Instagram. Um, and I want to engage with uh, people there. So, guys, follow HD Resilience, uh, Res- Resilience on Project. Instagram. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, Howard, when you think, because uh, obviously with all your, let's say, experiences, let's call, the, call it like that, mm-hmm. uh, in, uh, in your life, when you think of success, yeah? Yes. Success as a general concept, yeah? 
yeah, considering everything that we've talked and everything that you've uh, told us about <clears throat> your hard moments and difficult moments, yeah, what do you think success is for, let's say, yeah, like a concept in life? What okay. do you think success is? That's easy. For me, uh, success is uh, being happy. Okay. For me, that's, I mean, I don't know what it is for others, but for me, success is being happy. I don't have millions. I, I, I planned on having them when I was in my 20s. I thought, yeah, I'm going to be an actor and this and that. I'm going to have millions and like, you know, and then of course, you, the bumps along the way and the, the, yeah. the you know, yeah. et cetera. But I'm happy. I'm not, I'm not unhappy. You know, okay. I've got, uh, you know, I've got a place to stay. I've got, you know, I'm healthy. I can do things. I can work. I can be here, you know, talk to you. I'm That's happy. So important. success for me is, is, to be happy and if you're healthy happy, and happy ha- yeah. healthy happy if you love what you do that's even a bonus that's even better yeah. right yeah um i don't think uh, you know uh, and so other, other people meant uh, other people measure success by uh, money yeah you know, the, the car they're driving etc cetera, etc cetera. i'm like yeah but you know what when you die you can't take it with you you're not going to be driving a bentley in heaven no. you know like when no. you're gone you're gone everything you were everything you are everything you were going to be is over Right, it's done. So let's uh, and people, people. The thing about happiness is why do people, why do people wait till life is perfect to be happy? You know, everything's got to be because it's never going to be. Perfect. It's never going to be perfect. So why not choose to be happy? You know, just yeah. be happy. Hey, yeah. I'm going to work today. Cool. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's cold out today. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's going to be warm inside. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a great perspective, Howard. Thank you for that because you know many people that they have. For example, the health, they yeah. will not appreciate it. Not only or only when they will lose it, you know, yeah. that, that's the problem, you know. So like, like you said, they, they are chasing the money, yeah. but they are uh, forgetting about the basic stuff again. I wouldn't, so. uh, I wouldn't trade health for money at all. Uh, you had to trade the money for health, so uh, well, yeah, you've seen true. the other. Well, I've seen the, the other way. way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm okay to do that because <laughs> yeah. that's 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 not because because that gives you what does that give you? That gives you something that you cannot buy, and that gives you time. It, yeah, yeah. Right? You know, if you're alive, you have time. Yeah, and I think that time is the most valuable little asset uh, that yeah. we have nowadays. Absolutely, right? it's not question. a money. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's about the time, time. right? And it's not, you know, and the, they say all, all the expressions in regards to that, you know, it's not, it's not about having the time. It's about what you do with the time you have. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. To make it worse, actually. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Howard, one, another thing, because uh, I don't know, I wanted to ask you so many things uh, about uh, the, let's say, artistic aspect of your life also. Mm-hmm. But um, when you think uh, of one of the best books, for example, that that you've always liked to, uh, to just give to people around you, which one uh, oh, wow. was the most that was... Wow, books? Yeah, books, yeah. Gosh, I haven't read a book in forever. <laughs> all, the, all the books on my shelves are like, you know, strength and conditioning, working out, health and wellness, <laughs> physiology. Um, okay. Um, but there was one by Martin Luther King. I just can't remember what it was called. Um, yeah. Okay. I can't remember that. And the other, and the, honestly, the last book I read is called... You ready for this? Heal your heart with EECP therapy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that, was the, that was it. That was Heal Your Heart with ECP therapy. That was the last book I read, but of course that's a medical that's a medical no, book. No, that's but, good. So. Um, I used to I used to read a lot. I, I did read a lot of, um, like I say, Martin Luther King and Les Brown. Mm-hmm. You know, and then but you know, we, we the video whole video internet YouTube thing came out of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to read anymore. It, click. Yeah, yeah. I just, click I just, and you see I just it, go yeah. to sleep, listen to that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Howard, uh, I have some uh, few questions uh, for you. Okay. You know, and uh, if you want, you can answer. If you want, you can right. say just you know pass. Uh, here we go. The fire yeah. round. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, lightning what, round right here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what do you like, the mountains or the sea? Mountains. The mountains. Do you like the summer or the winter? Uh, pass. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, uh, it used to be. It used to be uh, winter. Um, but now it's so now that I'm, I'm older and the bones and everything, I'll, I'll say summer. Okay, summer, yeah. Uh, maybe this is not so addressable to you given the liver situation, but uh, wine or beer? Wine. Okay, that's a nice one. What about uh, cinema or theater? Ooh. Oh, st- hey, oh, oh hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. Um, <laughs> I've done theater and I love doing theater, and I've been in, uh, doing, you know, I've done film and I love doing film. So uh, watching 
Yeah. That's a tough one. I, I'm, that's a tough one. I'm going to say, uh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to say film because when I watch theater, I'm, I'm, I don't enjoy it because I wish I was on stage. Okay, go. that's a good one, yeah. yeah. So related to stage, the next one, Hollywood or Bollywood? <laughs> oh, Hollywood, definitely, definitely Hollywood. <laughs> Come on. That's a good one. I, I have that's to try you. That's I a have good to one. try you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you have any experiences in uh, in uh, India? And uh, yeah, No, no, no. Actually, I, I was supposed to go, but yeah. uh, I couldn't get uh, the uh, visa Visa problem yeah, with Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, India was, India was uh, upset with Canada in some farming issue about... Uh, okay. And know, they banned you. Like, and, okay. and, yeah, so you go online and Canadians can't get a, can't get a visa. They, they took us off the, the visa list. <laughs> I know. Crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah. How are the next one? This is a tough one. Kama Sutra or a quickie? <laughs> Kama Sutra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, another thing uh, now. Uh, what uh, what would you choose uh, between um, um, spending uh, time um, for uh, one month in uh, in Hawaii or spending time uh, one month in uh, Asian um, islands, for example, in Malaysia, for example? I got to do Hawaii because I have I was only there one time. Yeah, I was in uh, Kona. Okay. Once. Yeah. Did you Did you like it? Um, well, Kona, I didn't. I, mean, I didn't like Kona that much, only because uh, you know, it's, it's, it was dry. Well, it's like lava central. Yeah, the I mean, lava central. Yeah, yeah. but Hilo I, I, I is want, much more. Yeah, I want to yeah. hit the big island and yeah, on the big yeah. island. So yeah. I'd like to try. I'd like to check yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oahu is much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the last one uh, for you uh, is uh, what is your uh, message to all the people? You know that. Um, They want to get something out of their field in life, yeah, whatever, whatever their field is, you know. Um, how to approach, um, let's say, all the struggle that they have, you know, okay, in order so to succeed. In order to succeed, okay. Um, have a plan, first and foremost. Have a plan. If you don't have a plan, then you will, you can, you can, you can only move laterally, you can't move forward. Then, um, Once you have a plan, then we, we have to talk about, uh, there's so many, there's so many aspects, uh, happiness. Don't wait till life's perfect to be happy. Have a plan. Don't wait for life to be perfect to be happy. Be thankful. Mm -hmm. And always be moving forward. That's no, that that's a great advice. That's a great advice. And thank you very much, Howard, because I think it's, there are so many theories out there and so many books and manuals, but actually it's just about the basics, what you've said uh, uh, right now. And it's about just sticking to all these uh, principles, right? Yeah. Don't overcomplicate things. Over, yeah. Overthink them. The, the human mind does that, oh, right? Terribly. Yeah. yeah. We're all guilty of that. And whenever I'm guilty of that, I just sort of got to take a step back and sort of go, Okay. <laughs> Back to the plan. Uh, Back to the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah A yeah. to B to C. I ate food today. It's a bright, sunshiny day. There's a famous poem, uh, Les Brown. Actually, I was reciting it the other day. Go ahead. And it's I, I, I don't remember. I just, I just heard it, but it was like, "Ain't it fine?" That's the name of the poem, and it's, and it's great because it's just this guy talking about, yeah, life is hard, and you know, rain clouds come and everything. But you know, how about today? Today's a fine, like it's a bright, sunshiny day. That's yeah. pretty cool. You know, so it's talking about living, living, living the moment. Living now. Yeah, yeah. living in the moment in right the now. here and now, Don't yeah. live in the past. Don't think about all the tragedies that have, that befell you. And don't think about what could possibly happen in the future. Let's, let's just be present and, yeah, and live yeah, now. It's a beautiful yeah. day. And, uh, you know, I, I can go to work. I got a job. And, you know. These, yeah, just, just enjoy it. Yeah, be yeah. thankful. Rejoice thankful. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and then, and people, it's not like, and people like to like, people liken that sometimes to being like, well, I'm just not satisfied just with this. I'm saying, well, no one's saying yeah. you have to have just this. I'm just saying, be thankful, have your plan, and then move forward with your plan. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know? Howard, I like very much uh, the way that you are um, uh, playing and singing, and uh, yeah, um, you have a, a great feeling of uh, or great feeling, a great ability to uh, improvise. So um, yes. I I've seen that. I've yeah. seen you playing <laughs> piano, and yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, would you be only if you want? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, would you be kind and uh, I don't know, uh, do some nice. Um, 
Whatever, it's your choice. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say like whatever from your, um, all your experience and all your um, songs or whatever you like right. to, to play for us or to sing for us, to oh, you know sing what, for uh, us because well, you don't have to play. <laughs> uh, the, um, you know what I like is, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know the words, but uh, one song, you ever see, watch, uh, I don't know what it is. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's The Voice, the one with Tom Jones is on it. Yeah, like Tom Jones. I mean, the, man, do you hear that guy sing? I mean, yeah. it's like he's it's eighty something, yeah. you know. But I love that song. He's like, it's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Da, 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 da. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. But when I see you crying, I mean, I love practicing his voice. You know, I love listening to him because it's great. He's got a great voice to practice to, and he, and I and I'll so I'll sing that in the car. You know, people probably think I'm crazy. He's a crazy black guy. Um, but I'm singing Tom Jones. I'd like to turn it. Up and sing it in different keys, you know, because when I, when I, I I'll tell you, I see him on uh, The Voice and he comes out and sings, that guy's 80 and he can blow, you know, he can, man, man, so I'm just like, uh, yeah, but if I had a piano, I'd do, do an original for you, but no. Uh, uh, Howard, you're one of a kind, you're one of a kind. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for uh, hey. for all the stories that, that uh, you share with us and um, yeah, I hope people will, uh, will uh, understand that uh, it's a journey, it's a process, it's about patience and uh, yeah, about Without resiliency. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, thank you. I hope uh, to see you again in one of our next episodes. We want to discuss much more about the practical applications. We are into sports, so we are interested in much more in that topic okay. uh, to get from you. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we want to know more secrets from the American philosophy. Yeah. No problem, yeah. So um, all the best uh, with your project and um, Thanks, yeah, man. happy to be here. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, Howard, for being here. All right, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, uh, we had a nice uh, talk with uh, Howard. Uh, just uh, stick around, and uh, we'll have some more spicy subjects in the next episodes. All the best. <laughs>